Okay, so we actually had a hot topic before we got into all of this shit. Uh, so breaking news as of the recording of this podcast on Monday, the 5th of October. Um, holy fucking shit, the end times are near. Microtractions. Micro tran chan fuck you words. <laughs> well you figure out how to say Get this. on I'm my level. It. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. You can talk about My this. micro track <laughs> damn it, I can't say it. Micro transactions there we go. are coming to destiny next Tuesday. Uh, so I'm just going to read this here because it's brand breaking news uh, just a few hours before we recorded this podcast. Uh, so written by Deej on Bungie.net, introducing Eververse Trading Company by Deej. We're, bring we're bringing Tess back. We've already said that there's more to discover in The Taken King, and there is. But beyond the content available in the launch window of The Taken King, our goal is to continue creating experiences that will keep the game fresh, fun, and surprising. Today, we wanted to share with you a new element we're incorporating into Year 2 of Destiny. This coming Tuesday, October 13th, Tess Everest will return to the tower with a new look, a new storefront, and some new items to sell, courtesy of Eververse Trading Company. Initially, Tess will offer 18 brand new emotes, like the trio of emotes offered via the Taken King's Collector's Edition. These emotes are completely optional and won't impact the action game in any way. To acquire these items, you'll first need to pick up some, air quotes, silver, a new in-game currency that will be available for purchase through the store associated with your console. Images and descriptions for each available emote, along with pricing information for silver, will be made available Tuesday, October 13th, alongside the launch of the in-game storefront right here on Bungie.net, as soon as the content is live. If you're not interested in what Tess has to offer, you won't ever be forced to pluck an item off her shelf. You'll still receive updates to the game, and you won't lose a Crucible encounter or fail to clear a raid because you didn't have the right Eververse trading company emote equipped. Our plan is to use these new items to bolster the service provided by our live team for another full year, as they grow and create more robust and engaging events that we'll announce later this year. It has been and continues to be our goal to deliver updates to the game. Going forward, our live team is looking to grow beyond vital updates and improvements to focus on world events, experiences, and feature requests. If you're still skeptical, you can log in next week and take a look for yourself. We'll be dropping some free silver into your account so you can purchase an emote or two and become legend through the power of dance. As always, we'll be watching and listening to your feedback, and we'll talk more soon. See you in the tower. Deej. So, microtransactions. Yeah. On the one hand, the unholy evil of evilness that has taken the world by storm, thanks mostly to iOS gaming, um, and has festered and destroyed things that uh, Activision has touched and EA has touched, and to a lesser extent, even things like Nintendo and Microsoft and Sony uh, in their own games. Um, so my thoughts on this basically are, on the one hand... Yeah, if it's just dances, fuck yeah, sure. Charge me a buck or whatever for some dances. I would pay a couple bucks for a dance or something. Just because dancing is, you know, it's a, it's a Destiny thing. And I'm a whore and will totally, you know, do that. Uh, if you want to throw in some shaders and maybe some emblems in there, I'm totally fine with that too, you know? Like then I don't have to work for it and I could just plop you know, like a buck or 50 cents or whatever it is right. that they choose to charge um, for. I mean, it'll probably be a really basic microtransaction thing. So it'll probably be like you get five silver for a buck or something. And maybe like a dance is like two silver or something like that. Um, so then you'll always have that one silver in your account. And you'd be like, man, if I just had two more, because uh, that's how fucking microtransactions work. Mm -hmm. um, Did you say we get free silver, though, by the way? Yeah. Okay. And they said pick up an emote or two for nice. free. Is what they said. But they also said uh la 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 Where was it? They had a number, didn't they? I don't know where I it might have been on the IGN article, but they said there will be eighteen emotes available. Wow, that's quite a bit. Which is a lot. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um I could be wrong on that. I think that's what I posted on our Facebook account. I don't see that in the Deej post here, just sort of scrolling around through it. Um, so don't quote me on that 18 emotes thing. Um, so I'm okay with it if it's that sort of stuff. Um, but if they ever fucking cross the line and it's like, here's Fate of All Fools for five ninety nine, dollars oh, <laughs> um, then Activision will have killed 
Bungie. Well, I don't think it's intended to be pay to win at all. I don't think that, I, honestly, I, I have faith that they won't do anything like that. But also, uh, you know, fate of all fools is essentially Jade Rabbit, right? It's the same. <laughs> that, that yeah, the same I was thing. making a point. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the same thing. Just, uh, making a point. just to clarify. Okay. I think, well, I, I definitely agree where you at, uh, Tim. I think I, I'm, I'm not against it <clears throat> if this is where they're going to go with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do know Activision. Yeah. And my fear is, even though Bungie, I, I, I got faith that Bungie will probably fight tooth and nail to say, no, we are not going to do pay to win. But I agree. I know Activision. You yeah, know, I mean, so. God, I mean, holy shit! Like, could you imagine if Year Three launches and it's free to play? Oh my gosh, I, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's gonna happen because Destiny right now is the hottest motherfucking shit ever. Yeah, I, don't think I mean, it's it's in terms it of and and because of that, yeah. I would not be surprised if Activision jumps on that bandwagon and strike while the iron's hot. Sure, they, you know, they. <sighs> They have, they just have that evil mentality, you know. They have that yeah. bad rep, you know. It's from they've done it with Call of Duty, Call of Duty, yeah, supply drops and all that garbage. Yeah, you know. Now you're at the point where if you pre-order, if you pre-order Black Ops Three, it's two hundred dollars, and they're giving away a refrigerator. Like, uh, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, and it, it's don't forget like, the night vision goggles from a couple of years yeah, ago, you know, or the so, radio-controlled car, or the aerial drone. And, like, it's fucking ridiculous. Sure I'm pretty sure this stemmed from them looking at the numbers and said, okay, we made this much money off of people buying the collector's edition from the same players that have already bought the season pass, so they rebought, you know. Well, you know what you know what I really think it stems from? Like when we bitched about you can't get the uh the shader and the emotes and the special class XP item unless you mm-hmm. buy the collector's edition. So yeah. we're going to offer it to you for 10 bucks, and that's and where that stemmed from, and the numbers real. were probably off the charts. Because yep. cause the other thing that I, I noticed, because like I picked up, uh, uh, I mean, I also got it digital, but I picked up the collector's edition because I missed out on it in year one. Uh, but I went to GameStop at midnight, and there's fucking nobody there. And then the article I read the next day is uh, PS4 Destiny breaks world record for like most digital downloaded game like within 24 hours or, or some headline like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm, that's because it's an online fucking game. Yeah. You know, like you cannot play it offline, much to many people's chagrin, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, or... so I think if they go in the root of that and they just keep that sort of thing there, um, you know, and it's the little things that are like cosmetic stuff like that, you know, like I, I personally, as long as it's not an outrageous price, have never had a problem with like, oh, if you want a new skin for your fighting character in, you know, Street Fighter 18 or whatever, you know, like I'm OK with that, you right. know, because it's it's a thing. But it's it, it enters into a whole other territory if it's starts paywalling stuff. Yeah, um, it, 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 I think I would probably be more comfortable <clears throat> with it if it was any other publisher other than Activision. And yeah. EA. Because it's always going to be that what if with them. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a long road we have ahead of us. I mean, we're only done with year one now, and, it's, and the yeah. plan is 10 years. So yeah. I think... And, I they're, think... and by their contract, they're already a year behind. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, still, I think still, even still, I'm I'm trying to remain optimistic because I love the game so much. I I mean, I I agree, yeah. you know, that Activision. Is, I, I get the skepticism about Activision because I've played well, Call of Duty for years, and I mean, sure. I I I couldn't stand a lot of that stuff. Like I remember in Black Ops Two, the Peacekeeper SMG was an SMG AR hybrid, and the thing was insane. It was just insanely yeah, good. OP in, yeah, have. OP, way too OP. strong, way too strong of a gun. I mean, I had it, but you know, I had to pay for it, and I don't, I don't want to see that happen in Destiny. And if it does happen in Destiny, it would be so sad. I'll probably still buy it, which is terrible to say because I don't want to <laughs> contribute to that sort of mindset. But I mean, I don't know. I just love Destiny so much. Like Destiny is like no That's other true. game I've ever Destiny played. Destiny is a phenomenon. 
Yeah, it really is. And yeah. it's just, it's really funny to me to think back, like when I was still playing Battlefield 4, and I was like, oh, you know, I just I just got my PS4 because I want to play Battlefield 4 64 player servers. And I was like, oh, yeah, 64 players is awesome. And I was like, oh, what other games can I play on my PS4? And I heard this new game called Destiny was coming out, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Like, I liked Halo, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, maybe it'll be cool, but. I can't. It's just amazing for me to think about how much time I've invested in this game and how how That's disgusting. Yeah, it's not not <laughs> even just the time invested, but the connection I've made with the game, and not even just yeah. the connection, but like I I don't know if you guys have listened to Planet Destiny. Um, I do. Uh, podcast uh, with yeah. Luke Smith, and he was talking about like the the how it's like not not just the game itself, but the raids, you know, especially were like mm-hmm. a. Uh, you know, it was a social thing. It was like about con- people connecting, and like that's why yeah. there's no matchmaking for it. And like, and I love that aspect of it. How it's just kind of it. It's supposed to drive people to to to, to get together. And like he was talking about the Gorgon maze, and how like after this big Templar fight, you were supposed to just have this silent time where people had to actually talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And not just play the game, and like it's it's just such an it's such an innovation to me in gaming. Like even more oh, so yeah. than like I think like games that I've loved like more than anything. Like uh, The Last of Us was one of the best games I've ever played mm-hmm. ever story wise. Mm-hmm. Everything high so, five right here. Yeah, yeah, right. It's so good. Mm-hmm. But like Destiny is a whole nother beast. It's just, and I've sunk more hours into Destiny than I have into anything any any other game I've ever played. Probably yeah. it's just yeah. insane. Yeah, it's agreed. I, so I don't want to see it go that way, but it, yeah, it's it will hurt me just because of you know most of the stuff that you said. I've the experience that I've had with this game and the experience that I'm still having with this game. I'm you know you're still meeting new people. You you you're yeah. inside of this world, in this community, you know, of other people who play this game, and 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 I've met so many people from this game i haven't done that since halo 2 you know and and (laughs) bungie just does it right they know what to do to do it right you know so it's i yeah for them if if that was to happen i i I would be hard disheartened i mean disheartened really you know so yeah and, and 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 it, uh, I don't know. It's just the fact that I know how Activision is. I know how they, it, anything can start off so innocent. Yeah. You know, well, here's 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 a couple things. Okay. First of all, I think as long as Jason Jones, who's the founder of Bungie slash chief officer slash chief creative director, you know, dude who's been running the whole show, as long as he's at the helm, and most of the original Bungie staff are still there, I think they'll still have still stick to their principles and still be the bungee that we grew up with. Um, at least for me during the Mac years and uh, of course during the Halo, Halo years for them. Um, because they're not owned by anybody. That's that's the thing that everybody keeps reading. Like they're not owned by Activision. They have right. a contract with Activision um, for both advertising and publishing and, you know, uh money (laughs) you know and their 10-year contract which is now highly public um you know so and i think you know like you know i think we'll we'll you know we'll obviously see probably things that'll sort of buck the bungee trend like this microtransaction stuff you know because like if we look back to the halo days the only thing that they ever did was that they would either do um a season pass, or they charge you ten bucks for like five or four maps. God, I, I really don't want to see a season pass on Destiny. Right, like with Call there of already Duty. was. What do you mean? It was one last year. Yeah, the expansion, expansion pass. Are you oh, fucking that's kidding right. Me? Yeah, the it's two already, expansions already in one. went and done. Jesus. And we don't, and we don't even know what the map is for this year. Like, yeah, are I've we bought, gonna get? Are see, we gonna have to pony up another forty dollars for an expansion pass? Like, we yeah, don't even know what's coming next. Yeah, that that was a little different for me because I bought the pass, but that's, yeah, I because, did too. I, that's because I was paying for content of of in game. You know, I wasn't paying for a specific weapon. Yeah, I wasn't paying for maps. You know, yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking too. I have that when you say season pass, Call of Duty immediately comes to mind. Well, you know, they didn't they didn't coin that fucking term. I know. I'm just saying that's what comes to mind for me because it's that's where I see it. It wasn't obscene. Dude, this DLC was forty bucks. To buy and we got a crap load of stuff. Call of Duty is sixty bucks, yeah, mm-hmm. for fifteen maps only. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a couple guns. 
Yeah. And you, you, yeah, you but know. they know they can get away with it because they've gotten away with it every year since what? Call of Duty two, three, Modern or Warfare, Modern Modern Warfare, Warfare two or three, something like that. Yeah, it might be. Two. Well, they have a loyal yeah. following too. Very. Yeah, weird. it's it's crazy, but it's also dwindling too. True. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I just wanted to touch on real real briefly again. Yeah. This fucking Black Spindle Quest. Uh -huh. Um, it came and went this week, and uh, I again didn't fucking get it. Um, you didn't get it? No, I didn't fucking get it. Oh, neither man, did Damien. <laughs> neither did Damien. Yeah, man. Really? We were oh, really fucking fuck. pissed about it. I'm sorry to hear that. I would I would have helped you guys. My if I, fucking if I only had known. my brand new clan, like like Damien was with me like this last week when we were trying to do it, and we were trying so fucking hard, and we spent so many hours. And da that was the most I have ever seen you mad, Damien. Like, uh, you were cursing up and down a fucking storm, bro. It was, it, it was, like, it, it, was, was it was like, oh, man, dude, I think he's going to throw the controller through the screen. <laughs> like, and oh, that was shit. just a bad night in general, because that was like, one of my off nights in Crucible, and I was already pissed off. Oh, uh, yeah, it that's was, true. You were, you were pretty down about that. Bad but no, and then so I log off, and then like three hours later... Um, although I didn't see it until morning, um, two people of my of my brand new clan they send this picture and it's them with their fucking black spindles and I'm like you motherfuckers how the fuck did you do that and then they're just like oh we just we just three manned it and then we did double titan bubble with uh, helm of saint fourteen and we just sorted the boss and we had like six minutes to spare and I was like uh, fuck you guys titan op <laughs> defender titan op um, so so for you killbot. Uh, since you're the only one of the three of us who actually has it, what, yeah. was, your, what was your strat to fucking get that stupid shit? <laughs> well, um, mainly swords, but also Titan Bubble. Um, okay. So yeah, there's a, there's so a the lot thing, of man. there's a lot of taken in that last room, right? And uh, I actually two manned it the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me and a buddy of mine, we uh, we had I think I I think I might have been yeah I was a warlock that time and I was storm trance. Warlock, and I had the Ray's Lighter, which is the only exotic sword mm -hmm. I have at the moment, the, the uh, Solar One, which is amazing for taking out a single target. Like, you see a Major, and that Ray's Lighter is just going to take him out with that R2. Just done. Easy. But um, he had Weapons of Light Bubble. He would put that down, and we just mostly focused on uh, clearing out some of the ads so that we could get to the boss, take out the boss, and then clear out the ads. We finished, I think, with about, like, 30, 40 seconds to spare. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second time, I actually did it twice. So I have, I have two. I had two three tens. The second You're time, disgusting the fuck out of me. Right <laughs> yeah, now. the second time, I actually did it with three people. The second time, I heard it was easier with two, but I hate to say it, but for both times for me, it wasn't that bad. I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm just. Very, yeah, but you're, you know, you're top one percent. Yeah, I'm not very experienced ever. in this game, but uh, I did it with. Uh, Kono and Buzz, uh, you know, Buzz, another member of the podcast, he, mm -hmm. him and I, apparently he, him and Kono had a lot of trouble uh, with some of the other uh, people we played Destiny with. Uh, they had a lot of trouble trying to get that thing, for because Buzz is, likes to snipe a lot. He really wanted that thing. But mm -hmm. uh, they had a lot of trouble with it. But when I went through with him, we did it on our first try. Apparently he said they did it for like several hours with some other people. Yeah, at this point I've spent... Probably seven hours on that fucking stupid yeah. fucking quest. I've got it first yeah. try both times. I got it. I don't know. I'm. I'm gonna. I don't know what it was. It was just. I don't know if it was the people I was playing with or if it was just because. I don't know. The strats were real, but I mean the the second <laughs> the the second time we just um, cleared out as many of the mate like the larger ads that we could because the scions are just gonna keep multiplying. Mm -hmm. The scions, those goddamn taken scions, you can't do anything about oh, them. Yeah, They're just going to keep multiplying. Over. You pretty much have to ignore them. That is Catholic la rabbits, you know, yeah. just fucking <laughs> Yeah, the place. exactly. And you got to take out the uh, centurions and the knights and stuff, just get them out of the way. And the blights, the blights, I think is the, is, I don't know if that was your guys' strategy. Yeah, yeah no, we, all, yeah, we always we took out the blights. blights. Yeah, take out those blights. Split. Immediately, and then uh, Kono had this this strat. I mean, we didn't really use this the first time. I didn't need it the first time, but he said like, "Okay, we're like I was a Titan that time. I wanted to get you know a second three ten, and we went up there. He was okay. You're gonna put your weapons the light bulb. We're gonna block him against the railing, and then we're just gonna sort him to death. That's exactly what we did. The boss went up there, put a bubble down. We put him against the railing. We just sorted him to death. Two raised lighters, I think, and we had a bolt caster. 
took them out. And then the hardest part really is just clearing the ads out because there's so many. And yeah. uh, they're pretty powerful too. Those those taken nights that spit hot fire. Oh, man. They just spit that hot fire at you. And then we we, we just kept trying to deal what with all the with ads. What was with that accent? I spit hot fire. It's from... Uh, I don't know, it's like a rap, a rap thing, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Spit, like, Dylan, 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 and Dylan. It's a spit off. <laughs> but five uh, laugh. yeah, oh, first yeah. five rappers laughed. Dylan, <laughs> exactly. This guy. Was, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, Dave knows. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we just we took out all you know the big ads uh, after the boss, and then just tried to clear all the small ads, and then after that it was. I don't know, man. I, I really don't know what to what to say about it because for me it was it was tough, but it wasn't like raid level tough for me. It was just kind of a little difficult. So not to sound like a dick, but I mean, it, for me it was. Yeah, like no. That. All all I'm hearing is me and Damien suck. No, no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying for me it wasn't that bad. I don't know. Maybe it was the people I was playing with, or I just kind of uh, we maybe. I mean, you just gotta kind of, you can pretty much have to just kind of take it slow, you know? Like you have to. Kill, clear take out. It, you're telling people to take a slow in a timed ten minutes. Yeah, well, I don't know how fast did you make it to the room. I mean, we, we I think we really made good the, time the getting, getting to the room. The fastest me and Damien did, which was our first time, was we got there. Was in, Six, we got there with seven minutes. Yeah, it was a seven, that's seven, really ten. good time. Wow, yeah. seven ten. I got there. I think the most I got there was 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 six minutes on the Jesus. clock. So I don't know. Anyway. Alrighty, I guess that's a strat that works for Black Spindle. Should that ever fucking thing show its fucking ugly fucking head I think it's show next week or yeah. whenever. Yeah. Um. So speaking of the Black Spindle, it sort of leads into this other little thing, uh, or at least hypothetically leads into this other thing of nobody knows how the fuck to get the sleeper simulant. You know what? I heard yeah. someone found out how to get it, but it was just rumor talk between me and my clan members don't ask me how mm -hmm. where west when I, I would think that would have made a bungee page like mm -hmm. first person ever and you'd see them interviewed in the weekly update because even deed said he doesn't know he yeah. doesn't. well so here's the thing though so like i was playing uh with one of my cl my clan mates uh conair shout out yo what's up um and we were doing uh, so here, here's the thing, like, I wasn't actually looking for the sleeper simulant, um, but, uh, I don't know, it just sort of, it just sort of evolved over the weekend. I was playing for the quest that you have to do, which I found out later, much to my chagrin, was actually the quest that you do, uh, you do a special version of the Promethean Code on Heroic for, um, the Old Hunger yeah, quest line. Yeah, I've done that. Um... And we were scouring this bunker Raz too, um, because we were thinking that like you know it's a heroic, and the speculation now is anything that's a a special heroic mission is hiding stuff. Because um, like I've I've not seen it myself, but I know that the one where you go into the vault of glass uh, for the Taken King, there's a secret thing where you can actually get into the Atheon throne room and open up a chest that has a fucking uh, ghost in it. And people are thinking that when the daily rolls around for that, that, that might be how you get to start the quest line for no time to explain. Ah. Um, Cause people have been able to, to uh, spawn into there and stuff doing some, um, some spawning tricks uh, like fire team, like one person goes in and then the other person loads in and he's near the room and then it spawns him into the correct thing. And there's like new stuff inside the vault of glass. Um, so, uh, me and my clan buddy Conair were sort of thinking the same thing on this Promethean Code mission. And we'd heard some, we'd read, we'd both read the Reddit posts and stuff. Um, and so like we scoured everything and like the things that we observed was there's way less lights on in the Promethean Code, um, until you activate the terminal where Cade's got the stealth codes. Um... And I don't know if it's because the mission does this automatically or not, but like when uh, I activated the stealth code things, I had him standing in front of the Omnigal room and I hit the code thing that would typically end the mission and I ran backwards mm -hmm. and then Cade's voice like faded out in static. And then the ghost said, hmm, okay, well, I guess we'll explore. 
which was like totally new dialogue. And then there was like way, way, way more lights that were lit up within the bunker Raz and like all of the doors were lit up. And like uh, my buddy Conair was freaking out because like the doors lit up to that uh, the omnical room and stuff. And of course we scoured, we didn't find anything except, and people on Reddit have posted this too, but like he found some vents that looked like maybe they could be destructible because there were clearly pathways that led underground somewhere. Uh -huh. Like you could see geometry through the vents and they went, looked like they went somewhere. And the vents were sort of like the vents that were destructible in the saber strike. So maybe that has something to do with it. But of course the biggest thing was when we came back to the Cade room and there's that big hole that had opened up in the bottom, which I know now is part of that old hunger quest. But at the same time, though, why would there be such a huge drop into such a huge room that would be just an add on for a little tiny bit of quest to get a ca special right. calcified fragment? Like, because the one thing about that room, and if you look on Reddit, apparently the uh, frame for the sleeper simulant is on the wall in that room right before you end that mission when you're fighting the Taken. So <sighs> signs seem to point to that, that goddamn mission. And so we'll see. Maybe you have to do it on a daily heroic. Maybe. I don't know. We don't know. Did uh, Dame, did his mic get all freaky for you for a second? Oh, uh, Tim's? Yeah. Nah. No, he sounded really? clear. Okay. Did for me for some reason. That's interesting. Hmm. It, that, that that's weird hopefully it's not fucked up in the recording yeah now you sound fine i don't know if mm -hmm. it's my headphones i don't know okay anyway yeah anyway uh do you guys have anything to add on that before we move on to i have no idea man call? i haven't i haven't heard anything about any any stuff yeah like that. what i've heard about sleeper simulants <clears throat> that maybe if you rank up your gunsmith is the speculation yeah I've no heard. that's been de uh debunked yeah i know rank five is for his curse but yeah i have no idea yeah Dude, i'm nowhere um, here yeah. ranking up anywhere on my gunsmith i'm still at like zero yeah the only thing i know for certain is that the uh the delvin weirdly numbered uh rifle parts that mm -hmm. you get completely at random uh is that there's five of them one on each destination and every time you turn them in uh the gunsmith you know says a little bit yeah. more about I, his um, memories and shit i turned in about three yeah turns in about three of them but i didn't know it was only five i thought you just got well one or it's speculation <laughs> that there's only five i know for me personally i have gotten one on every destination except for mars you can get multiple on the same destination by the way too mm -hmm. yeah but they're the same ones yeah i'm just saying Ah, uh, okay i see what you're saying uh, so, i haven't even taken it to account where, you're, where i got my only one i can remember was the saber mission and yeah. um <clears throat> the uh, dark blade yeah see yeah. and it's totally weird because like there's no way to track which ones you have or haven't gotten yeah right? like it's all just like hush hush <laughs> yeah that's good though i like that they're they're delaying they're not giving us everything right at the gate i want i want there to be more things to discover because if there wasn't then you know the community is so just like adamant about just getting everything uncovered and everything discovered that yeah but i mean know. people have gone like crazy with it like uh there's a way to glitch into the omnigal room in the Pr promethean mm -hmm. code mm -hmm. and like people have been able to glitch underneath the rasputin computer thing and they said that there's a room down there that they can't get into that's brand new geometry that wasn't there previous mm -hmm. um so people are maybe thinking something to do with that interesting um yeah, i don't know yeah let's talk about the raid i'm ready for the raid okay here we go <laughs> all right i'll 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 lead you through it so uh this is full spoilers for king's fall raid yes, if yes. uh you haven't king's fall that raid and killed that burger king yet um well then then too bad we're spoiling it right now mm -hmm. <laughs> um so I think, first of all, uh, and we talked about this a little bit last week, um, the fucking new raid is rad. Um, it's really, really, really good. Um, the general community thoughts on it is that they knocked it out of the park with uh, the King's Fall raid. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Oh, wholeheartedly. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. So we're so we're gonna get into some nitty gritties here. Um, was there anything in the King's Fall raid that let you down in any way at all? Like based on your own personal hype? Um, me personally, I don't think so. Um, I <clears throat> I think I had a pretty good experience of it. Um, maybe no, no. I would have said maybe the war priest. It, it could have been a little bit more challenging, but no. Okay. Uh, maybe the beginning. Maybe the beginning. That, maybe that could have been changed. Really? Yeah. Running the relic and forth. I don't know, man. Like, cause the thing is, I didn't know what to expect, so it's hard to for me to be let down when I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and I think no, well, I mean, like, I can't think what, of anything that disappointed me. I well, mean, let me that's... let me let me frame the letting down part, right? So, like, based on the experience of your anticipation and the previous mm. two raids that Bungie sure. has produced, yeah, like, did it let you down in any way? Oh no, absolutely not. Yeah, no. <laughs> what I said in the first podcast was that I I wanted like you know mechanics and i wanted like puzzles and i wanted like you know all these things i think okay if I, if there's one thing that i had to like sort of pin down as being something like maybe that kind of let me down a little bit i it would i would say that it, there wasn't enough like just utter sheer just mindless killing of like trash mobs and things like that like for instance you know uh take a templar fight for example and mm. the vault of glass you know there's not even is there just a lot of ad killing, you know, for confluxes or oracles, but there's there's uh, lesions in between where you really got to make sure you get these guys down. And there's a lot of super use and, you know, orb generation and all this cool stuff there. I don't think there wasn't the like there were there was some of that in this raid, but I don't think that there was anything comparable to Templar uh, in terms okay. of like legions and stuff like that. So maybe that. But that could be remedied, you know, in the in the yeah. future with heroic and third difficulties, possibly. But you know, I, I think I wanted what I what I wanted more than anything was mechanics and puzzles, and they definitely delivered on that. Yeah, I think be, because it might have been the lack of just ad shooting. I actually like that better because it showcased the type of mechanic that you did have. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. It, it definitely showed that you need six working parts. Um, to to beat Oris, especially at the end when you have to fight him. Um, oh, yeah. I, I love that about that. You know, I, I it's just it was it was an all around great experience. Even at Golgoroth, you you need all six together. Uh, especially at Golgoroth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the hardest parts. <laughs> yeah, sure. you know, but um yeah, I, I like the fact that the mechanics were a very, very team based. Very team based, and, and and they let you rely on each one of your members. Because I'm gonna tell you this: that I run the relic, and that is probably the most pressure you have. Thank you. <laughs> time in, you know, over more than the sword bearer, you know, more than the relic runner on in in um at the Templar, because <clears throat> that whole team is counting on you to get to that spark. You know, mm -hmm. even, it, it's different with the daughters because you're randomly chosen. Sure. With, with Oryx, that whole team is counting on you to get to that spark. Yeah. To get if that light. Up, if you fuck up the jumps, then it's a wipe, and it's it, like, oh, thanks yep. a lot. You done. Even if or if you, somebody's not on their plate, someone's not on their plate. You, you, you don't know, have even if you, jumps to you make. Stumble that one second. Even if you get a late start, that one second of a late start kills you every time. You know, because, unless you're me with a warlock who can actually jump. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I get there pretty quick with my hunter. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And how do you do on those jumping parts? Oh, I do very well, buddy. That's why I'm the runner. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I love that a lot, though. Yeah, I agree that there's that everybody. It seems like everybody's role is very important. Even the support roles are important because you can't have ads shooting you all day. You got Imperial Centurions that spawn in mid. You know, between Dodgers Pillars and Oryx fight, you got. You know, all these things going on. Everybody's role is essential and crucial. Oh, yeah. And I do love that part. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. So uh, my next question, which is kind of going to lead into my answer uh, for anything letting me down in the raid. Um, the actual the actual end fight for me, like the whole mechanically, like it didn't let me down. But the fact that uh oryx just fucking 
was huge and just like hit his fist on the four fucking posts and mm -hmm. didn't like reach in and try to fucking claw the guardians to death with his giantness. <laughs> uh, that let me down. Yeah. Um, I get what you're which, saying. which leads, uh, which leads uh, right into my next question, which is what part of the raid do you think could have been designed differently or better? Uh, so talking about existing stuff within King's fall, of course. Well, I mean, I can I can definitely understand where you come from with the whole or like because the thing is, like if you compare like for instance if you compare Oryx to his son, you know we it was it was much less personal, you know like you're right he he was sort of just this ominous like you know grandiose sure. figure more than an actual boss. He was just like, oh, here I am, and I'm fucking huge. Deal with it, bitches. Arm wrestle me, bro. Like, he, he yeah. wasn't really, like, really a figure, like, to deal with. He was just sort of this thing that you shot at every once in a while while you right. were dealing with all of the mechanics that he had set in place. So it wasn't really like you were fighting him as much as you were fighting the mechanics, which is kind of, I get where you're coming from with that, and I, I completely get that. But I think, you know, the whole point was that people wanted a mechanically difficult raid, and you can't have mechanics and a personal thing like killing Proto with a sword at the same time and but have it be can, as though. equally intricate really i mean that's a lot to ask though i, I think, mean that's, I think yeah, you can. Yeah. Like, that's a lot even, to ask and it's a lot to deliver on even if you just took the fucking um the punching or the the hammering the fist things down like if you had the uh you know his sort of throne altar room um you know and you had it designed a little differently so maybe there was like multiple different places or whatever and there's like a way to like trick oryx into like attacking a few guardians that would then like hold his fist down there and then you'd have to like dps his hand or something um like i think that would have been a little bit better in my opinion um but the reason the reason it let me down so much and i think it could have been designed differently was because the regicide mission where you do fight him mono and mono that did feel more personal so fucking good in it my opinion in my opinion yeah. like even if they had just done that fucking thing and just made him him gigantic well, so yeah. then like all the guardians had to move the fuck out of the way of his giant sword sure or whatever but they, you know like that would have been amazing they sort of did add that sort of feel to it though with the with the echo or the shade of no, orcs in the teleporting no. part yeah right i mean that's no. well think about it though the, the shade yeah. of orcs part is base is essentially the same fight He's still in a fog, yeah, except you can hurt him. But and and no. you need to kill the Shade of Oryx, otherwise you wipe anyway. So that kind right, of right. adds that element to it. Yeah, but you're fighting the Shade, so it's less personal. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, you're, you're fighting the same fucking black floaty roby thing that you fight. And like... I think for some, <clears throat> it's kind of it's kind of hidden uh, from that just by the presentation of it, though. You know, because mm -hmm. the president, when you fight when you fight Quota, I mean Oryx for the first time. And just how you encounter him, you go from that first phase, and then, and then you go back into the mist and in the in the, in the, uh, the shade and the echo. You know, it's just it's just something that was has never been done in a Destiny raid. You know, maybe Atheon might have been close where you get teleported. You yeah. know, but it, it was just the fact that that suspense was added in there. You didn't know where that that shade of orcs was coming from, and you knew you had to get him out before he wiped you. You know, it was. It was just a different tone, you know, and I, I can see how, you know, some people, I, oh, how Bungie kind of would, would have carried it. We're like, okay, we know it's, uh, we could do a little bit more here, but maybe we can just, you know, get by on a presentation. Of, I don't know. I mean, it's I tough mean, to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't let down by the fact that Oryx was gigantic and he had a new model and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like, I love that part because, like, when I saw that for the first time, I was like, oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. We're screwed. Like, I keep thinking back to, although I saw the uh, stream afterwards, but the world's first, and there's that one dude who just saw him and was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and he just, like, ran all the way back yeah. to the door. Sure. Um, like, I said different things when I saw him. And yeah. I was like, holy fucking shit, fuck. <laughs> Honestly, like, it, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of a slippery slope because... I think okay, like you know, we all know that Bungie is is definitely good uh, about listening to the community and sort of, you know, um, playing to what we want, and which mm -hmm. is great. I mean, we you know we said we wanted like an exotic version of 
Black Hammer, even though a lot of people said they wanted an exotic version that was the original Black Hammer, but that's a little too much. But we did get an exotic Black Hammer, year two Black Hammer. You know, whatever we <clears throat> most You of the thing, got an exotic. Okay, well, I mean, as the community as a whole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. no, no. <laughs> Not even as a they whole, because we couldn't yeah, fucking do it. Yeah, they gave the opportunity, yeah. But, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you know, bottom line is they, they definitely listen to the community, which is important. And I think they, they do that. They do a good job of listening to the community and, and yeah, trying to their best really to play good about to, that. Yeah, so playing to what we want. But and what I think a lot of people were saying, I think what uh, the majority of the community, like the hardcore community, wanted, which was um, like a, a vault of glass or like on par with vault of glass, you know, level of raid. And if you think about it, like right now, I was just thinking about it, comparing uh, Oryx to Atheon, there's somewhat similar fights. Um, you know, you have uh, Atheon mm. without Times Vengeance, you don't do almost any damage. You, you right. fairly peck away at his health. Same goes for well, with Oryx. I, think, I don't think you do any damage unless you actually get the bombs detonated. But right. uh, in order to... Okay, so you think about it. In order to defeat uh, Atheon, you have to get teleported, which you know he does for you anyway. And then you have to get the relic. You have to kill all the things inside. Then you come back outside. You know, There's these mechanics. And then you shield you know, and get times vengeance and lay into him and get all that damage done. And it's sort of a similar situation with Oryx, where but you don't have to get you know a, you don't have to just get this relic and then you know whatever you actually have to get the relic first. You have to stagger him, and then you have to uh, detonate bombs that you previously have been previously dropped from ogres that you killed, and then you can actually damage them. So it's a similar sort of mechanic there. It's a little more intricate with Oryx, but it sure. is very similar. I mean, you know, you, I don't think you could ask for for anything, you know, more on par with. With that, because I mean, if you think, I mean, sure, like if you compare it to Crota, Crota was a lot more of a personal fight. You just, we actually felt like we were killing him because we we're bashing his feet in with a sword, pretty much. Well, one but, person is. Yeah, one person is true, exactly. And it, even then, it only makes it personal for one out of the six people. But if you, you know, if you compare it to our favorite, you know, one of our favorite raids, uh, if not our favorite, Vault of Glass, then they're actually very similar fights in their mechanics and just how they work. Cause you can't take down Atheon personally. You have to get time of vengeance and you can't even get close to him or anything. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's all, it is still very similar. So, but I mean, I do get what you're saying, but it, it, I guess to get back to the question in terms of what I would design differently, I don't know. I, I want to say Golgoroth, but at the same time, yeah, I, I was thinking about that, but now that I've gotten good at it, yeah, it's, it's actually de designed well. I mean, he's a bullet sponge. He's definitely a bullet sponge. But at the same maybe time, that's what I would change. Yeah, is he, I would turn his bullet sponge down a bit. Yeah, he's definitely like a bullet maybe sponge. maybe twenty five percent or something. Yeah, but at the same time, I think he's a well designed bullet sponge. I don't think he's yeah, like that's true. It's it's hard for me to say that I could design anything differently because honestly, I think they did such a good job. I mean, yeah, daughters is great. War priest is cool. Totems are good. I really don't know. I mean, I think Oryx is maybe one of the... I think I want to say Oryx because that took me the longest. And it's so mechanically uh, yeah, intricate it, that it's Yeah, it, like, it did take me the longest. Because I, even though I struggled on Golgoroth, and I think pretty much everybody did. Yeah, the first know, time. Um, the daughter's fight is definitely easier. Yeah, but yeah. it's also... It's like a halfway step to teaching you what you're going to need to do to exactly. fight Oryx. Yeah. And then the Oryx fight is so like, yeah, you can maybe have two people die or be off the ball at certain parts of mm -hmm. like that whole sequence. But like if fucking three people go down, it's a wipe. The jumper fails, it's a wipe. If yeah. you don't get at least three people into those fucking uh, things to reclaim the light, it's a wipe. You yeah. don't kill the ogres while the dude's doing the jumping. The jumper dude's going to die. It's yep. a wipe. Yep. You know, and if you don't do enough DPS, orcs don't give a fuck and will wipe you. <laughs> they will wipe you. Yeah, I guess honestly, I think you're touching on exactly. I think if I had to name something, like because I was thinking as I was thinking about the fights for the most part, like the the engagements and the encounters that you come across in the raid, what would I change about those? But I guess if I'm really thinking about it, I guess if I really had to pick something that I want to change differently, because I mean, I guess I'm sort of already throwing it out there that I wouldn't change anything because I love the raid so much, but. I guess if I had to change something, it might it might be to give a little more like you know leeway, a little more yeah, like less forgiveness. Wiping. Yeah, because if you, yeah, because everything's wiping. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's jumping like, oh. mechanics. Well, you're gonna fall down and wipe. Yep. If uh, you know you're you're fighting the war priest, 
literal sun blackout wipe. Mm -hmm. If you're fighting Golgrath, there's a literal fucking totem that tells you how many times you can wipe. Yeah. And then, of course, if you don't, he enrages and you wipe anyway. Um, You know, the war priest, uh, if you're not in the bubble, you wipe. And again, we already covered Oryx, like fucking like nine different ways to wipe. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's very little forgiveness. And the thing is, I want to say like, oh, maybe there could be a little more forgiveness in there. But at the same time, I love the challenge so much of just being able to coordinate so well as a team and have that good teamwork that I don't want to see it changed. And I'm excited to see how much more difficult heroic and maybe even the third difficulty could be because... I love that yeah. challenge of just everybody overcoming these these struggles and these these puzzles and these mechanics. As yeah, it, you know, going back to going back to Crota when we had our first new raid, really, oh. uh, you know, everybody I talked to was like, "Oh man, the Crota raid is fucking hard as shit, but it's so fun." There's also a level above us. True, right, well, and then. Um, you know, you do you do that and you get good and it's like, well, Crota Raid's actually the easier of the two raids. It's the easy. It's a strike. <laughs> you can solo it. Yeah, you do. The whole thing. And, really and then, um, you know, you get to Oryx and like the first week it's like, oh man, it's so much fun, but it's so fucking hard. Like you don't even understand how hard it is. And now, yes, it is still that hard, but it's mm-hmm. a little easier because like you understand now the mechanics and what's expected of you. Yeah, yeah. I- yeah, yeah, I think it's it's not the fact that it's well when we first went in, we went in uh, in the unknown, so it seemed like extremely difficult, you know, at mm-hmm. the time. <clears throat> now we've had it for about what two weeks now. Mm-hmm. People have mastered it. Um, it's it's not the difficulty as far as the the damage that you're taking or if they're bullet sponges or not. I think it's the difficulty comes in with the mechanics and how fine-tuned your team is um sure. you know that could definitely make a, a easy experience turn into a nightmare you know because if yeah. you just if you if you have that one guy you get the orcs that just for some whatever one whatever reason or another that just can't stay on that platform mm-hmm. you're done you know that 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 jumper is never going to make it you know you're you're screwed mm-hmm. um but and, and that's that goes back to what we were talking about the self res is that's going to be so important comes heroic time to do the mm-hmm. raid because Potentially, if one yeah. person dies on that pe- on that platform that jumper is screwed you know and then you can't revive them so yeah. it's definitely it's definitely going to come down to how fine tuned the team is and and I think that would be just I guess come I guess it'll come down to just running with the same crew that you run with all the time I mean Granted, you we got tons and tons of friends that play this. We yeah, well, I mean, I don't necessarily run with the same crew all the time. I mean, yeah, it's me getting either. there. Um, it's like a mix of different crews now. Like sometimes it's your crew, Damien. Sometimes it's uh, Killbot and you know parts of his clan and like parts of my clan now. You know, so and then sometimes it's still LFG to like fill in like a missing post or something like that. You know. Yeah, there's uh, Damien t- uh, touched on something that I kind of want to talk about, which sure. um, was was that he was saying how like mechanically intri- intricate it is, and how or or like I think uh, I guess the general consensus is that like um, you know it's it's so I think it's so mechanically intricate that it was tough at first, like has already been said, but that we're starting to get used to it. And that's sort of yeah. something that I've been kind of feeling and something that slightly worries me. And that's what I'm very curious about with the with the harder difficulties is that I feel like the 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 caveat to a really mechanically intricate raid that relies more on mechanics than it does on just sort of pure just trash mob killing or just just sort of, mm-hmm. you know, killing things in general, which is, you know, the whole point of the game, really, if you want to think about it, um, is that if it's so mechanically intricate and it's that and it's hard in that way and you go that direction of it being just difficult in the sense that it's a puzzle once people figure out this puzzle it's not going to be as hard anymore and and it's just going to be like oh you know we know how to do this really easily because we've done it before and it's right. not so much about the difficulty of things coming at us and killing us it's about knowing what to do and we already know what to do after the first time we do it so then we just get we keep refining that strategy that we have and then 
it's just cake. It's a cakewalk from then on in. Whereas Vault of Glass is still kind of hard just because of the sheer amount of things that are coming at you and killing you, and not just because of the mechanics. That's true. That's true. And I and I haven't run Vault of Glass or even Crota since year Neither two began. Neither have I. Uh, but I need to because one of my clanmates, Conair, has never run Vault of Glass. He's done Crota a million times, but he's never done Vault of Glass ever. Oh, wow. And uh, Vault of Glass is sort of like is still uh, a prime example of the raid qualities that Bungie exemplifies. But also, I think going forward, um, you know, I think it's a really good place to fine tune your own raid team mm -hmm. because it'll even though the mechanics are different, it still has everything. At least so far of the three raids, it still has everything that you need to coalesce yourself as a team. Yeah, it really does. Um, I just wanted to I just wanted to run down really quickly uh, if I can sure. break it down super fast, like the, the, the differences of mechanics between the three raids. Mm -hmm. um, so like we look at Vault of Glass, we have, uh, you know, an opening and a big door that nobody knows how to open and you have to hold three plates while defending it from stupid Vex that want to get on it and mm -hmm. build a spire and open a, open a thing, which then leads you to traversing a cavern to jumping onto some platforms and sort of descending down into this sort of uh, arena that uh, if you listen to the Planet Destiny podcast, uh, actually is like the most MOBA-like thing in the entire game because that arena is basically divided into three lanes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you get down into those three lanes, you have your fire team split up again into uh, three smaller fire teams so that they're defending these things from an onslaught of Vex. And then after you've done that, you've got special Vex that you can't touch or you die. Right. And then you have these glowy Oracle things that like mu make musical notes and you have to kill super fast or they cause you to wipe, which then causes you to spawn a, uh, a mid boss for the raid, which is like this really hard Templar that has this invincible shield that can only be brought down with uh, a person who has a relic and a supercharged that launches and makes it vulnerable to be attacked by the fire team and whether that's people way up on the spawning perch with snipers or people down below fighting off other ads and still killing oracles in order to get through and then of course that leads to a ginormous fall down below either route you go the the back mm -hmm. door route or just straight off the cliff uh, both ways have their own issues with yourself and physics <laughs> mm -hmm. which then leads to a really fucking dark maze with these stupid fucking uh special vex called gorgons then if they see you and spot you in uh a stealth segment really um they fucking wipe your team which then leads to um a platforming sequence with platforms that uh not only uh disappear but like will disappear while you're on them and stuff and then you have to go to this dick wall and you know basically just like make your way uh with some tricky jumping across like this this narrow edge and then and then you get to the showcase piece of the vault of glass where you get to atheon's throne room and not only you're presented by this big ass throne room but you're presented with two gates one that sends you to the past and one that sends you to the future and you have to both go into those gates and get relics so that you can then defend another conflux or pillar or whatever you want to call it from mm -hmm. some other vex which then spawns the boss and then you're fighting the boss and then you have to do um you know you one uh, a a, a, per, a a a set of fire team members will be sent back to either the president of the or the uh or the past or the future and then you have to get another relic and fight your way back in order to get a bubble to even damage the boss and then damage him out that way. Yeah. You know, and then that versus uh, Crota's End, which is, you know, a descent literally into hell, followed by a pitch black maze with lanterns that explode if you don't move right on them while being continuously assaulted by a shit ton of ads, you know, leading to holding a plate that builds a bridge that leads you to another dimension. Uh, which is actually Crota's, uh, uh, Crota's sword dimension, uh, which is actually gotten into in the Books of Sorrow uh, that Buzz got into very deeply last week. Um, 
you know, which then leads you to the sequence where you have to hold three plates, one to build a bridge and the other two to stop these pillars from fucking wiping the team so you can get all the team members across. And then you race through uh, these barriered walls while the, 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 the purple things are shooting you to make it to Crota's throne room to then fight um, some, uh, some wizards to then fight Omnigal, which is the mid boss of the Crota's raid. To then, or Ear Ute, sorry. Sorry. What did I say? I said Omnigal, didn't I? Omnigal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid, stupid bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you fight Ear Ute. Um, and you have to kill her within a certain amount of time or her song will kill you. And then that leads to summoning Crota, which leads to, uh, people killing a special knight, which leads to getting a special sword, which leads to, uh, the team DPSing Crota to bring his shield down. So then that stuns him for a minute and then you can just whack the shit out of him until you kill him. And you take all those mechanics into account and then you have King's Fall, which really is the biggest of by far mm -hmm. of those two you know and you have um first of all you have a pretty decent use of the interior of the dreadnought like mm -hmm. you're using a large chunk of that space to play out the very first mechanic of the raid which is having your fire team hold down the court of oryx room while getting six orbs uh two of which at each time has to be dunked simultaneously or, you know, I've never failed that. What actually happens if you fuck that up? You gotta start. Is it a over, wipe? Or you have to go back one. Oh, it just sets you back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then you have to dunk on both, or you get set back some, and right. then you jump through the court of Oryx gate, and then you're in, I guess, a taken dimension or something because it's all black and white and shit. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Is it like why when you go through, or yeah. what, like you mean mid portal? Yeah, when you I go through the Court of Orcs portal. So you've beaten the first mechanic of King's Fall and you go through the portal. And then After you go through it, it's not it's not black and white. That's only when you yeah, get to it. torn between dimensions, I'm pretty no, sure. No, no, no. It's black and white. Is it, is it, is it yeah. isn't it the jump the first jumping puzzle with the ships after that? Yeah. Yeah, it the, is. The first straight run of those three sets of jumping puzzles are all black and white. Yeah, I know the first one is, and the second one, because the second one is on the pendulum. Yeah. And you're jumping on that. Oh, is oh, okay. Well, no, the pendulum's first, though. Is the pendulum, pendulum is first? first? Yeah. Oh. So then that leads you to this black and white realm, and first of all, you're like, what the fuck is this black and white shit? Um, and then you have these fucking pendulum things, which I guess are the prisoner crypts that we saw in the Sunless Cell, or at least on the way to the Sunless Cell. Um, and they're swinging back and forth, and uh, they are unkind to when you land on them because of their roundness. And you've got to dodge your way over that, which, you know, for people, if they're not good at jumping, is a huge challenge. And then that leads to crossing this giant space chasm with hive tomb ships fading in and out of wherever the hell they fade in and out to. And you got to traverse that which leads you to basically a halfway post and leads you to an even longer, more complex version of that shit. It's like my phone goes off. Um, <laughs> you know, and then that leads you to, um, um, you know, moving up uh, like a gravity lift, which takes you out of the black and whiteness and into sort of the first uh, fighting mechanic, which is um, building up what is it? It's 20, right? Uh, it's 10. But it's, but it's 20 uh, one technically. On each, one on each side. Yeah. yeah, which leads you to building up 20 runes uh, by getting rid of um, a special buff that you get by splitting your team into a set of three, uh, you know, two sets of three, going into different rooms and getting like this buff shield in this room that'll slowly kill you if you don't have a buff. Oh, and then you have to trade off the buff in order to get around. onto the plate. Right. to then get rid of the death singers whatever the hell to then power up the rooms and you do this for 20 runes which is you know two at a time while ads are coming at you the entire time this is gonna be such a long explanation because it's such a long race <laughs> which leads to oh i'm trying to i'm trying to condense it i'm trying to be concise 
you know, not trying to make it like uh, Golgroth and puzzles. <laughs> God, there's so many things. Shut up. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get through yeah, it, which, which, which then leads to the war priest, which leads to you breaking your fire team down into, into three sets of two people uh, mm -hmm. with an upper shelf and a really low shelf and then sort of a mid-tier shelf with a uh, an invincible boss that has ads along with Taken that spawn. And then after a certain point, once you've killed the ads, you have to figure out the sequence of three yep. to step on the platform, uh, the plates in order to trigger a buff that will be given to one person and then a, another type of, I guess, buff is given to another person so that he kills ads yeah, while the, the people inside the his shield no. do the damage to the thing. But then after that goes away, one of these three pillars that are in front of this war priest dude will like burn away from the sun because this black bite is sort of like an oversoul and it's like sending like this white power of doom in order to dodge behind there. And then you have to repeat that uh, three times. With, and if you suck a fourth, but you don't get a do over because you'll burn to death uh, if you don't kill him in time. And then after that, that leads to a fucking dark maze that's super dark, really jaggy, all over the place. And then there's fucking holes in there, just like in the, the beginning of Crota's End. And a plate sequence if you want to unlock a special chest, which then leads to this Golgrath fight, which is insanity in its own right. And it's this this room where you spawn this crazy fucking, you know uh what do you call it mutant ogre and then there's this this rune in the back of the room that like counts up to six times but it's really five before it wipes and then there's ads that spawn on the left and right while there's these glowy metroid balls in the ceiling that you have to shoot down which creates a pool of light that you have to jump into for a second but while another person has to get the gaze of the golgarath to distract him from wiping the people who are down in the mosh pit, who are shooting the dude to do DPS, to then jump back up and then re rinse and repeat that cycle until it take and come, in which case you need to have somebody who has a storm trance who jumps down in there to lightning all the people so while the people are doing the DPS and the, and the gaze guy is running around getting the gaze of the Golgrath in order to kill the Golgrath in time before he either invades or enough people die that it wipes the people. Uh -huh. Whew. I was waiting for the long <laughs> breath. <to. sighs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then that's the halfway point. <laughs> <laughs> right and then after that you have um uh, another light maze with another light jumping puzzle going upwards and then that leads to at least what luke smith calls the literal wall of dicks which is these piston things that fucking shove you out on this jumping puzzle um which also has an actual puzzle inside of the actual jumping puzzle with like sitting on the platforms in order to activate all the platforms that you can get your team up there. Not even mentioning the fact that there's a place way above the part where you start in, in that jumping puzzle to activate uh, the, you know, with your ghost scanning uh, the floaty bridges to get up to the secret chest up there. Um, and then at that point, you can finally make it to um uh oryx's throne room but then you have to contend with his two daughters and the two daughters are these two super death singers and then that uh leads you to having four people on different plates in a certain sequence um ascending vertically to build a platform in the correct rotation according to where this spark that appears in the sky that you have to get from one of your teammates who's randomly chosen, who gets taken literally in torn dimensions. And then he's the only one who can stand on these taken platforms and then get this uh, spark who then has to go to the correct Death Singer to dunk them in order to do damage to them, to give a shield, to prevent the people from the Death Singer song, to getting killed by the people. And then you have, it's the right one first you have to kill, right? Uh... Uh, yeah, sure. yeah, because yeah. she would get pissed. And yeah, you, you have I to kill the right Death Singer right. first, or because actually, you, I think you just you... have to kill them sequentially. I'm not sure if it actually has to be one or the other. I think as long as you kill one and then the other, but I'm not no, sure. No, no, that's not right. Because you if, sure? you, if you kill the left one first, the right one enrages. Interesting. I guess I haven't done that then. I don't know. Yeah. Um. At least I think. Don't quote me on that. I feel like that's the case. Yeah, that's, that's um, anyway, testing. 
So then after you kill that, um, just rewind the podcast, that part where Killbot explained the Oryx fight. And then you have to do that <laughs> to Oryx. So it's like, you know, like you said, Killbot, getting back to the point, um, mechanically, like King's Fall is hella mechanically. Um, oh, yeah. So that being said, um, I'm actually going to gonna jump one here just because I was talking about mechanics here. What is your guys' favorite mechanic in the new raid? Um, might as well have to be Oryx. Well, like, but like what mechanic? Like the yeah, there's a lot the, of the, the jumping, the dunking, the getting the thing, the shade part, um, the shooting him in yeah, the chest. The, the fact that um, you all have to rely, well, the team has to rely on that runner, you mm -hmm. know, to get to that spark in time, you know, and the, and the and the runner has to be efficient and fast enough to get there to a point where <clears throat> he can keep the team safe. They don't have to; they can get off the platform as well, you know, so they won't take damage from the oncoming ship and the ogre all mm -hmm. going on at the same time, you know. So that, I think that's like my favorite just because that's like teamwork at its finest right there. You know, it's just it's even sure. more it's even more dependable on the relic holder than Atheon at the Templar. You know, so agreed. <clears throat> and even more with Crota with the sword, you know. So Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's my favorite mechanic right there. What about what about you, Kilbot? Um, I think as weird as it might be to hear this, I think I think my favorite is or at least my favorite mechanic for some reason is War Priest. I think I like yeah, the, the a, lot of, a lot of a lot of people like that design. Yeah, I think it's really cool how for one you have a limited amount of attempts, so you have to get it right. You only and, have four and it's tries. a micro puzzle too. Yeah, exactly. And there's the 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 Oculus where you have to be behind the the pillars to survive, and then also whoever kills the or whoever gets on the last uh, plate gets that uh, gets the aura. And it's not just like, for instance, the aura in um, in the totems part. You just have to have the aura and be under the totem and transfer it. Like, yeah, that's cool. And then the aura in uh, Daughters and Oryx is just, it doesn't really matter who gets it as long as you have it. Like, it's just, I mean, it, it takes some getting, you know, it takes some work to get it. But in, in terms of actually having it, you don't really have to do much. There's no real responsibility with having that aura. It's just sort of you have it. Whereas right. in War Priest, that you have an actual job if you have the aura, and you can't even damage with the boss really. You have to focus mm -hmm. on killing ads to keep that timer going, and that's yeah. a whole new sort of side. It's just like not only does the aura person have a, a responsibility, oh, but the other players do in that. DPS and the boss. Yeah, I forgot all about that. That you have to, if you the aura, you know, if you have the aura, you have to consistently kill ads because that clock will go yeah. down and wipe you. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite mechanic from the raid is, uh, when you're taken in the Oryx fight. That is cool. That is a very um, cool, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, I, I liked it for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, um, because it, well, it, it half completes, uh, actually what Bjorn wanted from the raid, <coughs> which is getting taken, like you get taken. In yeah, the raid. sure. Um, but like, I like it, um, because of like what you have to do. Um, like uh, as warlock and you know a longtime gamer, like I like all the jumping shit. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm not particularly good at the sword or the ship part for some reason, but um, I'm not either. That fucking uh, you know the the platforming part, like even with the really weird and honestly sometimes annoying, like taken like white black swirly sort of like filter that they've got on your view. Um, who's driving with their top down in their <laughs> convertible right now? That's oh, the no, it sounds like a sound like frequency. That's the window. Mm. My B. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's cool. hot in here. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah. No, I just like the mechanic of it, and then uh, also for me particularly because like I wasn't able to go. On Vault of Glass the first time, and nobody ever let me have the relic. And I think to this day, I don't think I've ever killed Crota with the sword. I've gotten close. Um, the fact that um, because I was good at jumping, like the first time that I did the raid, like I was the one who was chosen to do the jumping uh, platforms because, like, I I like rarely missed. And Killbot 
like weren't you there for like the first part when i got there and we were at it for like seven hours straight or something yes i was yeah i got really fucking good because you did it over and over and over again <laughs> yeah well and i rarely miss like the only times i ever missed was uh like once in a in a while i would overshoot a platform or if a somebody didn't kill their ogre in the back and it would just fucking destroy me in the air. Yeah. Uh were pretty much the only times I ever missed. And even like like and I never like sometimes I would say it but like there would be so many times when people would get off their platforms like too soon and I'd be mid jump and I'd be, have like a platform to go and I'd be like oh shit, can I move over towards it enough to get it? Yes, I still got it. You know. Mhm. Mm um so just like for me um like that made me feel really important in the raid, which which is pretty good feeling because like I was never a sword bearer, never a relic holder, you mm -hmm. know, never never my sort of thing. But you also, could jump. yeah, I can fucking jump. <laughs> um, and I could dunk too. And then also because I was a stormcaller and I had a sword, I'd fuck that knight up. Yeah, true. You know, eighty five percent of the time, unless he rabbited for some reason. Sure. Um, so like that worked out really good. You know, and like I really enjoy that part of the raid. Um, but also to sort of back up Damien, um, you know, like even though that part <laughs> is super important in a similar way to having the relic or the sword, um, it's not as important as everybody else being on their platform and oh, getting yeah. the blights and killing oh, yeah. the ogres and doing the DPS. I mean, it's um, all important, I would say. It's, it's the same. It's the same level of importance on both it sides. Because as the runner, I'm yeah. counting on the other four to stay on that platform. And as, you know, on the flip side, you're counting on me to get to that relic as quickly as possible so you can stay alive um, off that platform, you know. So it, it definitely goes both ways. It isn't like Crota where we're just relying on the sword rail up there and we're just in the back shooting rockets and mm -hmm. trying not to die. But it's really all on the sword bear because they have to get the hits on Crota. You know, it's a, it's 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 more balanced and equal um, importance on both sides of the party. Kind of like um, like Atheon. You know, everyone mm -hmm. on the outside, depending on the people on the, as the relics, <clears throat> to get out with the times vengeance, and everybody inside, depending on the people who are on those uh, on those. Um, God, I'm blanking. Sink plates. Sure. They can get out, you know, so yeah, yeah, all right, cool. So, we've got two more things on, on the raid here. Um, what did you want really want to be in the raid but wasn't in the raid? Hmm. I don't know, okay, go by, yeah, go by. <sighs> I don't know if I can think of anything. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, well, what? <sighs> well, the th the thing that I really wanted was the uh, the orcs to die, and then he like you see a countdown timer for the dreadnought, and then it says sparrow link enabled, and you have to fucking uh, sparrow race your shit out of there. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. that I want it so bad. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe in that road. Now, you know, it's funny, someone kind of want to mention, um, I thought judging off the story missions and everything, I thought there would be like, because uh, like, okay, take the story missions. You had the, mm -hmm. the running away from the hive after you take the, the part of the crystal from mm -hmm. Oryx's um, crystal room or whatever that is. Yeah. And you have to run away from the hive. And that's actually mm -hmm. the part where you get the black spindles in that mission. And then there was also the uh, stealth part. Where you're invisible, you have the, the yep. stealth driver or whatever. Mm -hmm. They didn't you include run away. Yeah, so there was a stealth part in the story mission, and there was a runaway part in the story mission, and neither one of those sorts of ideas were incorporated into the raid, which I was sort of expecting. Mm, that's a good point, but it very well could be in heroic. In heroic, yeah. Who yeah, knows? Know. Um, okay, uh, one more before we get into speculation on hard raid. Uh, what what was the most surprising moment in the raid for you guys? Oh God. Hands down for me, it was, it was the, and it was hilarious. And honestly, every single time, and I know a lot of people talked about this, it's the freaking piston room, man. It's the, where you go in there and like, I think somebody, somebody, somebody trolled me just like I've trolled other people who have done the raid with for the first time where they're like, oh, stand right here. And I'm like, okay, I'll stand right here. 
boom, immediately pushed by that piston, launched against the wall of we death. Did, we did that too after it was done to me. So yeah. I was the one. Yeah. Did I did I do that to you, Damien? Yes, yes you did. <laughs> <laughs> and every <laughs> single time, it's a riot. Oh my god, and it's still a riot because, like, even if you're good at that part, you will probably fail at least once, and people will be fucking laughing your ass off. Yeah, it's just so funny seeing somebody be like, "Oh shit!" and they get launched and killed by that thing. It's just that it's yeah. It's or or you're waiting on or you're waiting on like one of the like the tiny platforms. And you're like, just jump here, and then somebody jumps at the wrong time, and they like they're like two inches from your face, and then boom. Yep, <laughs> they're gone. So good. I, um, I love that part. I I had a funny one where I got hit by it, but I sword blocked, <laughs> and I hit the wall, and I went um like past where the door is to go up to Oryx and I got pushed back so far I got an out of bounds four second countdown oh, man. Wow. and I was like holy shit <laughs> like the physics are so real <laughs> <laughs> yeah I love that it's so good it's such a good addition yeah um yeah basically uh, my favorite mechanic is that mechanic too just because it's so it's so funny to me because it's it's everything that was amazing about the invisible and moving platforms mm -hmm. in Vault of Glass, but with the added effect of um you could die. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> like and it's it's happen. so good. So that good. can ruin your perfect your flawless raider trophy. <laughs> oh yeah. my that, goodness. That room it. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. Okay, cool. So the last bit we have to say on the raid is what's our speculation for the hard mode raid, which we don't even know when it's coming, and the hinted at mysterious third mode on the raid, as well as um, uh, Damien posted a video on our Facebook page. Um, uh, people have discovered, and they don't even know how they discovered it really, that there is a secret room mm -hmm. in the piston room. Mm -hmm. that like it's a big ass room and there's a dunking statue and mm -hmm. like vents that push you up in the air like a fucking basketball thingamajig sure um and there's like no data about what that well room no about. no actually no i can touch on that if you guys don't know already i think it was re recently discovered today Oh. Um, if I can just sort Hit of up. shed up, some son. light on that. Yeah, there's cool, uh, apparently there was, there was, yeah, so it was discovered there's a secret room in in that room that, in the area that we were talking about with the pistons mm -hmm. um, where, yeah, there's a secret room and, and if you, apparently it takes some actual work to get in there. You have to, there's like these, if you go immediately to the right, I think, of where you walk into that, there's mm -hmm. like, there's and there's like a room that you see. And it's kind of it's far away. It's on the opposite wall of where you walk in. And then there's these like uh, spikes with like little lights on them. If you get close to them, they turn from like green to yellow or yellow to green. I don't know which one it is, but um, it, it, you basically activate these lights on these spikes, and you have to activate them in a certain order. And there's six of them. And um, if you activate them in the right order, I think there's two confirmed orders, just like there is in the secret chest in the Gogoroth cellar. Is there um, two orders yeah, in the? Yeah. What's the other one do? Uh, the same thing. It's just like the Gogoroth mm -hmm. Cellar where there's two different orders where they do the same thing. Hmm. And then if you activate it, um, it opens up the secret room. And I think you have to like do some weird stuff. I don't know if it was actually intended this way, but you can like use your sword to sort of jump sword glitch up one of the slanted walls. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think if you're a blade dancer, you can blade dance all the way across. And if you get in this room and it opens up uh, platforms that you can other people can jump on to get in this room. And then there's these six runes on the wall or something, and you can grab these relics and dunk them in this thing, and you get a buff. Um, and I think it grants you extra agility or something. I don't quite remember. But then I think even even these relics, like people have gone crazy ever since they discovered it, trying to be like, what can we do with this? And like people took the relics back to the Golgoroth room and like all these crazy things. And people were trying so hard to figure out what all this meant, right? There was all this speculation, all the all so much testing to figure out what it did. And because you could dunk, you got this buff, you could take the relics to different parts of the raid if you wanted to. Right. But apparently it recently, I think today, uh Luke Smith uh, tweeted out like, you know, uh, and I don't remember ex the exact tweet, but he said something like, you know, oh, the, you know, the the basketball court of Oryx or something like that was uh -huh. like a, is a cool Easter egg, you know, it's like a, it's a cool thing to like, you know, it's an Easter egg to like dunk 
you know, balls with your friends, just like, you know, your eight foot or your whatever, you know, basketball court in your, in your friend's driveway or something, but there's no loot. So I guess it really is just an Easter egg. Apparently there's nothing there. According to Luke Smith. That's mm. bullshit. Hard yeah, mode confirmed. Sad. Yeah. Hard mode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Illuminati confirmed. Oh my gosh. Well, maybe that's the third mode. Maybe, maybe it'll come to play in future. I don't think he he didn't make any um, distinction as to whether or not it was only an Easter egg um, for the entire raid, like for all difficulties, or if it was only an Easter egg for this one difficulty that we have available to us. But mm-hmm. he did say it was a fun Easter egg, but there's no loot. So as of right now, it's pretty much just a cool Easter egg, and there's nothing to be had from it. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a plant destiny. That. Planet Destiny video about it too. Yeah, that's why I saw that Planet Destiny, but um, yeah. I didn't know they discovered. I, I saw that they found it. I didn't know that they had more on it. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a very recent one that came out today, uh, okay. I think, and it, also the tweet from Luke Smith saying that it's it's mm-hmm. there's nothing to be had from it, which is kind of unfortunate. But at the same time, you'd kind of expect there to not just be, you know, um, loot bearing. Uh, secrets, but also just sort of little Easter eggs. I mean, I'm, and I kind of like that. I like that they have enough secrets for there to be loot bearing secrets, oh, yeah. as well as just Easter eggs, sort of just fun little secrets that actually don't give you anything. Sure, absolutely. So, given that we know for sure that uh, the development of King's Fall, the hard mode was created first, yeah, while they worked backwards in the normal mode. Right. Does that mean the third? Uh, that's, the, that's that's ties into speculation. Does that mean hard mode like? the hardest mode if there is a third difficulty and they they reverse engineered it twice from there or does that mean just heroic and they reverse engineered it once and then made one even harder i don't know what that means exactly no data yeah yeah so i think given that they did develop a hard mode first i think it's entirely entirely possible that there could be mechanics that we don't even know about or like killbot suggested there could be a whole stealth section in there yeah that's maybe a whole another it could be a whole another room two rooms in there that we haven't even seen yeah i mean we don't know because like one of the things that i was really speculative on during the crota raid was if hard mode came out and right at that point when you're running towards the white light and you went to a whole different area before you got to the bridge like that would have been incredible but right. unfortunately, it wasn't that at all. But we also know that they, those two raids were worked normal and then hard. And in those two raids, basically, uh, things were removed and more things were added uh, of things that you'd already done mechanically. So I think it's maybe fair to say for the hard mode of King's Fall that, you know, there could be a stealth mechanic. There could be a brand new mechanic. Maybe the basketball court has something to do with it. Maybe mm-hmm. not. I mean, like, um, my I'm going to throw my theory out there, which also goes right back onto my uh, what did you really want to be in the raid but wasn't part, was uh, we do hard mode. Hard mode comes out, and, like, everything's exactly the same leading up to killing Oryx. Um but like it, and a lot of people probably notice this. Like, have you ever noticed that when you go all the way up to the really edge of the platform in his throne room there, and you look fucking down, there is a platform way the fuck across a, cra- a, a chasm and a door like down right. there, like way down there. Wait, where is this in the in the orcs room? Yeah, yeah. If you go to the very edge, like you know where Oryx spawns and looks big and menacing, um. Like you can see it during the daughter's fight without triggering or after you've killed Oryx. Really? And you go and you go down to the very bottom there and you can see like you know, you see the like the ship how it extends off into the horizon forever. But before it extends, there's a huge gap, just like uh during the um the ship sequence, the ship jumping sequence. And then there's a f- visible platform with a visible door down there, a big ass door. No shit, I did not know this. Yeah, it's totally, <laughs> it's totally a hundred percent there. And my thought is, what if at the end, um, like, uh, you kill Oryx and he turns all 
you know, whatever there. But then he changes back into like his non taken form or whatever. And he like starts a fire on the back again, sparrow link enabled. And then you have to like sparrow jump off this fucking chasm and stick the landing on this platform to do a final showdown with him in hard mode. That would be awesome. <laughs> like a final or final showdown. Yeah, that would be very cool. And you could use the same, uh, you know, character model as the one in Regicide and maybe make the fight room something like, um, like he doesn't have any ads, but like he spawns, you could do it like a, like a Ganondorf fight in Legend of Zelda where there, uh, he spawns six clones of himself, but only one of them is the real one. That'd be and, sweet. And so then you have to figure out as a team very oh, quickly be... <laughs> in like a quick action battle how to take him out. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm all for any sort of additions. I I really like if like let's say for instance you just take normal Vault of Glass versus hard mode Vault of Glass. What are the real yeah. differences? More You've got what? oracles. You got more ads. You got more but you, exploding ads. Well, you have you different have the, route in the maze. You have the uh, bubbles. Uh, the what do you call them? The uh, detainment bubbles or whatever in oh, Templar yeah, that you fuck don't normally your detainment have. Bubbles. Yeah, There's you've got that, um, that would be like revolutionary. You know. Yeah, I'd like to see. I'd like like the thing is like if you if you think about normal normal mode versus hard mode vault of glass. It's really just a couple extra little mechanics and an extra an extra difficulty, right? But I would love to see not just a couple, you know, little mechanics sprinkled here and there and extra difficulty and you know higher light obviously at this point. I would love to see actual well, new sections like you're talking about. Here's here's one thing that just based on the previous things, I feel 100% is going to be in the hard mode. Um at the Oryx fight, a random person will be taken oh, for the platforming yeah. sequence. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah, I can see that. the platforms will fucking move. As far as move. Uh, like orb, uh, you know, like a fucking platformer. <laughs> like uh, instead of being static, like they'll fucking like move back and forth or some stupid. So shit. like our numbers won't matter, like they'll No 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 no. It still builds a thing, but say like oh, platform oh, to one, they'll like themselves. move further away plates. from each other and then yeah, closer, yeah. or like so, maybe they'll just be rotating, like in a circle, like a set of them yeah. will be rotating. Sure. So not yeah. the not the plates, but the actual platforms that the yeah. jumper has to jump on themselves. Right. They will actually move. That would be cool. I think mm-hmm. that would add a little extra dimension. That that would that would kind of um, coincide with the the hard mode uh vault of glass aspect of mm-hmm. of new mechanics that would make mm-hmm. sense but i would love I, honestly i would really like to see just like you know i think they're going to add you know new missions possibly or something when uh or new quests or whatever when um uh what's your name Yves Levante or whatever yeah well the dj update said that the the live team is working on on quests and more things and events to happen in the world yeah. Um cuz the one thing that we got from the uh the two different podcasts that Luke Smith has been on recently mm-hmm. is that uh Vanilla Destiny the dev team was very different and moving forward they're broken into basically four different teams now. They've got the big expansion team which Luke Smith is on slash right. the raid team. Um they have the live team which handles all of the the patches and the events. And that sort of stuff. Um, and then supposedly there's other teams working on other things, whether that's expansions or whatever. We don't know. Sure. That's like the thing for me though is that you know how I was saying earlier about like I don't want to see um like I guess my main one of my main issues with the new raid, even though I love the new raid, it's it's amazing, but like it's so mechanically intricate intricate, almost too mechanically intricate to the point where once you know the mechanics it's just kind of a cakewalk and you don't really have to worry too much about um, too many things because it's not so ad heavy and not so killing things heavy as much as just about knowing what to do. And if you know what to do, then it's just kind of, you just go through the motions. I would love to see new, uh, not just new mechanics, but like new, and this might be asking too much here, but like new sections, like you're talking about the sparrow thing. I'd like mm-hmm. to see not just new mechanics, you know, like with extra detainment bubbles and hard mode vault of glass, but like new things for us to figure out, I guess, you know, 
like new challenges instead of just yeah could you imagine we get transported into the into the the taken bubble at the end and not only is there a shade of orcs but there's a shade of crota and a shade of atheon that would there. be yeah i don't know about oh, the shade of i don't know if orcs cares about atheon it's just his son he cares about so like oh here's my I son crota. Yeah, yeah i, I can see crota, crota too like that would be cool i mean granted that's still kind of a just a a revamp that's just if you're talking about a shade of oryx and a shade of crota that's still kind of a, sure. a, a revamp thing where you're just sort of doing the same thing but slightly different and i just want to see something completely new and completely different but that I might agree. be asking too much that might be asking too much i don't know i'm hoping yeah. if they reverse engineered it from hard to normal that there was like more sections and more not just more like mechanics in the sense of extra detainment bubbles like vault of glass yeah. but like new actual things to figure out no, because I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. I I, I I really I really hope the the design impetus, uh, you know, from the the raid lead was just like, all right, throw everything, including the kitchen sink, in, and mm -hmm. then we'll work backwards. Right? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's much easier to add everything and take out a pose than it is to yeah, like, add and then think of more to put in because sometimes yeah. you might overdo it. You know. So. Yeah, yeah, we we certainly don't want them to be taking anything out. Sure, because like I mean, the thing about no, nobody got that joke. Okay, I did. Oh, it. taken. Yeah, I got it. Okay, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I saw the quotations come out when you when yeah. you said that too. Oh my god! <laughs> but like the thing about even though Oryx was so mechanically you know difficult, people still figured it out. You know, the, you yeah. know, the first day and like it was still. Like I got to give them props for how for how difficult it was and for how mechanically complicated it was, but at the same time, I, I just I personally don't want to see just more little extra tiny you know like mechanics sprinkled in because of this you know even the, even if it's just higher light we're gonna figure them out the community's gonna figure them out easy and it's and it's gonna go right from hard or normal mode being sort of oh we figured this out and we know what to do to hard mode being we figured this out and we know what to do. I want it to actually be like a mystery and I want it to be real puzzles. And I guess it's mm -hmm. asking way too much because this raid has already had its huge fair share of puzzles and this hasn't been easy. Like it, it took a long time to figure out. It took, it's a lot of teamwork, but I just, I want to see like, I don't know. I want to see like just not, not just little things sprinkled on here and there. I want to see like, I'm asking for a lot here, and I realize I am, but I want to see like I new think... things, like new mechanics, new sections, new stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think that's like the core mechanics of P of of well, not PVE, but <clears throat> MMOs in general. You know, it's so you like for World of Warcraft, you have competitive PVE in that realm. You know, and and that basically deals with which team can get through a raid or an instance the quickest. And yeah. that comes down to repetition and knowing the mechanics and know the fine tuning mechanics. So when you get into it, you know, you can run it as quickly as possible. You know, yeah. I think if they implement something like that, have a ranking system as like for, for the PVE side, that would kind of alleviate the 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 quick ceiling that you get when you do master something in destiny and then you yeah. you're bored with you know exactly so, mm -hmm. that's my main they, issue yeah because people it got to a point where i would just run crota casually by myself just to see yeah. if i can get something for a deaf singer that should yeah. never happen you know, exactly that never yeah happen. Th that that is definitely one thing that i don't think we've said is there's absolutely no way to solo this raid Yep, that's oh, true. No. Absolutely no way. Which is which is great. I mean, I think that's that's how it should be. Honestly, right. I agree. Great. And then, yeah, and like I think, okay, well, I was just thinking about this, and I think, I think the best way to put it in my own, in my own desires, uh, like the best way for me to put it uh, is that, um, like, okay, if you take Vault of Glass for example, which we all you know we love, it's a great raid, but. If you think about normal mode versus versus hard mode, it's um, you know the difference is that in normal mode this happens, and then in hard mode this happens and this happens. Right? You think right. you know this happened like in Templar. You know normally you don't get uh, is it yeah you don't normally get detainment bubbles right, but in, in hard mode you get you know all the normal stuff and you get detainment bubbles. So they're just adding things. I, I guess it, for me, the best way for me to put it is that in what I want to see in heroic mode is that instead of them saying, oh, 
uh, for Oryx, instead of saying this happens and this happens, just like within Vault of Glass, I want to see this happens and then instead this happens. Maybe mm-hmm. I guess what I want is for them to replace certain mechanics with different mechanics that are maybe a little harder. Like maybe instead of could you, could you imagine you come to the Golgoth room and it's like a totally different room with a totally yeah, different boss? Exa- yeah, exactly. Like maybe it's right. maybe it's well maybe not maybe not a totally different boss. Maybe it's still Golgoth, but maybe instead of shooting down his bubbles, like you have to shoot down his bubbles. Like I don't know. Like maybe you have to because the thing is, it's not like they can really just completely replace things. So that's like making a whole new section of a raid. But I want to see like instead of just shooting down his bubbles, you have to shoot down his bubbles. Well, I guess that's still also added. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm trying to say I want yeah, to see no, things you replaced. Yeah, into a corner. Well, it's just that I don't want to see things just added. I want to see like yeah. I don't want to see this happens and this happens. I want to see this happens and then instead. Now Golgoroth has a sword. Happens. Look out! Yeah, I don't know about that, <laughs> but like I just want to see something not just additive difficulty. I want to see like new things and like have it be harder, not just because they like decided to add some stuff. I want to see it be right. harder because they decided to maybe replace certain things. Not like a whole lot, not something, anything crazy, but maybe just replace this with something else where it's something new to figure out. Ooh, could you imagine in the jumping section, what if two people got taken? That'd be crazy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because now you lose, lose the support player. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Loader. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all. I think if, if they did do anything with the hard mode i'm kind of with with, with kill by give me more than just adding on a plus one you yeah. know that that mm-hmm. would that would get stale pretty quick you know and i think that will either ever a let a lot of players down because bungie had ample of time way more time the, the stretch between um the house of wolves and the taken king was much longer than crota and vanilla destiny you yeah. know so you, you they had a longer amount period amount of time to to say okay we're going to do actually not even the taking king the the how the dark below because there was no raid in the taking king so you have from the dark below to now mm-hmm. to get it right you know you, so, you mean there's no raid in the house of wolves, house of wolves, house of wolves. Yeah. yeah excuse me there's no okay. raid in the house of wolves but you had from dark below to now to get it right you know and, and it has to be more than just a plus one. It, it, it yeah. has to be, you know. It, it's. I think that I think they're going to deliver. I think you you you're going to see. You're going to see something. Uh, I want to say maybe an extra room, uh, extra maybe extra two sections because this already is one of the longest raid that Destiny has ever done with five parts. Um, yeah, it, it's it's easily an hour and a half to two hours on a good run. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. you know so i think you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see some i think you're gonna get more than just a plus one i i can't see them going from what what was that what was that march when 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 no i'm sorry december when the dark below released yeah you know all the way to to september you know yeah that's, that's almost that's, that's about nine months you know Working yeah, on a that's rate. that's a lot of time, and Working and for for given the given the fact that they, you know, started work on this immediately after Dark Below shipped. Yeah, um, that's an incredible design accomplishment, and you know, and we all see that Oryx definitely doesn't necessarily animate always correctly with six people, you know, and I'm sure that was a huge struggle from an online perspective to have a fucking character that big. Especially yeah. with the limitations of the of old PS3 hardware. And, yeah. And sometimes I, I see help. his frame rate drop when he's me too. Yeah. Often, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So really no time for lore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just longer. I just wanted <laughs> to say one thing on the on the piece of lore and it relates to oh. Oryx and Crota and stuff that's from the Books of Sorrow. Um, a thing that uh, uh, Buzz didn't get to get into either this week or last week, because uh, we were covering Books of Sorrow last week, Killbot, if you didn't know. Sure. Um, was uh, Crota was messing with some of the powers that uh, Oryx's daughters were messing with because they created the, they actually the ones who created the Oversoul. Ah. And in uh, Crota's 
sword realm, which is like his master plane of existence, because every uh, ascendant hive has their own sword realm or master realm where they preside, and only if you kill them in there do they truly die, which is why Oryx is so pissed. Because um, <laughs> like when the Guardians killed Crota in the normal world, it was no big deal because he yeah. could just resurrect. Um, but uh, first of all, the daughters of Oryx created the Oversouls, and the Oversouls were a way of putting a piece of your, uh, I guess, ascendant version of yourself Sorry. into a place that could uh imbue power and like basically like wipe the realm uh in a literal way to protect against uh incursions um and one of those incursions that they were playing with was the vex uh in the books of book books of sorrow they introduced the first time the vex um encountered them um and one of the things was because uh crota was playing with the powers of the daughters which is not really like in their sort of caste system um, you know, that he shouldn't have been messing with. And like Oryx was pretty pissed about it because uh he let the Vex in and stuff, and the Vex like adapted and uh started like fucking some shit up and like tried to create their own sword realm to compete mm -hmm. so that they could figure out how to kill the hive within their sword realm. And uh Oryx was so pissed, actually, and this is like fucking bonkers. I can't even believe this is actually in the grimoire. Um he figured out how to open up a Vex time gate and he fucking chucked his son Crota into the past and said, battle, battle your way to the future. And if you live, maybe I'll think about forgiving you or whatever. <laughs> like, it's like, so literally like Crota actually, and this is kind of fun from a, from a lore perspective, Crota went back like before the hive basically and like has been fighting all throughout history like pre-hive basically um up until present so he's like all super battle hardened and stuff like that and um you know it wasn't until uh he was killed in his sword realm that uh orcs got really pissed and decided to come on over to earth's area and be like who the fuck killed my son <laughs> you know uh and in his sword realm that ain't that ain't cool that ain't going down All right you want to be we want to be in this house you yeah uh, um uh, one one other fun fact is um the taken like the energy that Oryx uses that is the darkness um it's a it's an element of some other ethereal godly body that has granted that power to Oryx and Oryx killed the god that actually wielded the Taken power um, and took it for himself. Mm. Um, and like there's there's reference in one of the Grimoire cards where he actually calls the Taken energy or the deep. Um, and then he pauses and says, or the darkness, as if you prefer, and then goes on talking about it as the Taken energy. So when you see Taken, that is another element of darkness. And uh, one other bit in there is also that um, he refers to the encounter with the Traveler as this, this child of lies um, who basically like lies and gets uh, these civilizations to do its bidding. Um, and so that's interesting because that also backs up the previous vanilla Destiny lore that you know, maybe we are the darkness. But uh, the Books of Sorrow also seems to delineate that the Traveler is of the light, but it's not necessarily all good, whereas the darkness is something else. So, I don't know. It's interesting stuff. That's crazy. That means, like, the tables could be completely turned on us, oh, yeah. <laughs> if that's possible. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, or we could find an expansion where maybe we get, uh, maybe the next subclass is the darkness. That'd be interesting. I, you know, I was thinking that maybe, like, I think in the next maybe year three, it's time to make a new guardian. And oh god, yeah, one or two, one maybe, yeah, maybe one new guardian clan. I think two would be a little bit too much, but one of their and and with, with by that you have two new subclasses. So one of their subclass would be light wielder, or and the other one would be dark caster. So now you have balance 
But there's a lore behind that guardian, a reason well, why. Well, would... it wouldn't be light because the three that we have are traveler based. Are, yeah. Okay. Because, um, well, like, something... that's the way it's set up within the lore of Destiny right now. The thing I, the, the problem I have with there being a darkness based sort of class or subclass would be that I feel like everybody would gravitate towards that. They want to be the bad guy. Like, they want to be the bad boy. <laughs> like, play yeah. this like darkness maybe. based thing I, I feel like that would take a, maybe a little too much precedence and like whereas know. now they're all sort of in the same sort of vein just different little things i don't know that would be you, cool you, though you'd be surprised i remember when uh bioware rolled out the statistics for like who would play um basically the good side or the dark side in the mass effect games and mm-hmm. it was like 68 percent played like the good side and then like 40 something percent played the dark side Hmm. so i don't know i think you'd find the split would be more even than you'd think yeah it's possible um so that brings us to our final thing the question of the week which is what is your favorite change that bungie has made to destiny so far mine would be um the quest and and how i guess the lore now is somewhat more involved into the quest and isn't just like oh go to the tower go to the reef turn this in yeah back yeah. out you go you know so it's it's definitely even to the end game it's still you know a, it, it's still more lore based in in a way it, it, like there are places after it, in the end game content there are places on uh with either the dreadnought even i think even mars some way like that that's not in the story you know that's like oh wow i haven't been here mm-hmm. what is this you know and so i didn't even know this was here you know right. i played i played a couple of missions i was like wait a minute did i run this in the story like this is still a story what's going on here you know <laughs> <laughs> like but um yeah I, I, that's, I think that's my favorite about it now you know the fact that and the fact that hey i don't have to have the raid gear to be maxed out i can max out any piece of armor now or weapons Mm -hmm. with the infusion technique you know so i like that yeah i like the variety as well um Mm -hmm. i think that actually started with the etheric light where you could sort of max out anything you wanted and that started that started that change to be able to sort of look however you want and have whatever perks you wanted but still be able to be max you know level or max light or whatever and then it gets carried over um to taken king but i mean as far as my own uh favorite change i really don't know there's so many changes in taken king uh to to enjoy i guess for me it would just be i guess well it's it's not just taken king the question is oh, okay just to... what's your favorite change that bungie has made to destiny so far yeah i guess mine's still sort of lies in Taken King, though, because there's so many changes. I guess mine is um, that they sort of, I guess it's more mechanically based in the sense that not only was the raid very mechanically intricate, but also um, they, and I'm, and I kind of hate to say this because I loved Fatebringer for so long, and like I was such a hand cannon guy, and I, I sort of hate that I've moved from hand cannons to scouts because I still want to love hand cannons, but they're not as accurate, and you can't, they're not as effective as they used to be. But I just like how they sort of did away, and I think it was sort of necessary to do away with the just how powerful, like for instance, the vaulted glass weapons were. They were so powerful. And mm-hmm. so good that there's really no reason to use anything other than Fatebringer. There's no reason to use mm-hmm. anything other than Found Verdict and PVE. Uh, I, I like how they changed it so that getting loot drops and did away with like you know reforging and all these other things. It made because it's a loot. It's a loot drop based game for the, for the most right. part, and they made that relevant again by with with not only infusion. You know, because then even not just um, legendaries, but also even just rares, even blues are are useful. And, you know, even just decoding decoherent uh, engrams is useful because you can get something that's higher attack than what you had before. So mine's very mechanically based or just sort of, yeah, it's mechanically based in the sense that, um, you know, things matter more now. It's not just like, oh, I have all these legendaries, you know, I'm done. Because sure. I have everything I need now, right. you know, there's, there's 
Mm-hmm. Everything is there's there's more relevance. I think I think keeping keeping even lower tier gear relevant keeps keeps the game going, keeps progression going, keeps you know the just everything going. And I, I like that a lot because that just means there's more progression to be had, more loot to, to be had that is useful. And even even if you don't want a legendary piece. You know, you can shard it for for legendary marks, which is a whole new economy, you know, based um, aspect. So, sure. I like that. I think the most. Sweet. Well, I, I don't I don't disagree with either of your points at all. Uh, yeah. My favorite change that Bungie has made to Destiny, um, although I could easily jump on the Taken King bandwagon, I'm honestly going to say Trials of Osiris. Oh yeah, so fun. Um, it's oh yeah, the best PvP thing. I have ever played. Yeah. In all of any PvP anything online. Very intense. Period. Man. Like yeah. I never like I yes, yeah, it is basically just destiny with powers and the level cap stuff matters and it's only three people and it's this simple elimination thing. But there's just something about the way uh mechanically it works and it changes you like how you play destiny like so vastly in comparison to like everything else it's like wow it's it's pretty nuts actually. yeah no i completely and, agree and the fact that you go to like this fucking badass yeah. motherfucking lighthouse with this yep. fucking loot chest and there's all these mysteries <laughs> there and it's just like this is a thing that you can go to but only if you're worthy <laughs> yeah exactly i i have to agree because and i think dame uh, and I would both agree because we're both such, you know, PVP heavy players. Uh, I think that's very true because it, it's not only adds a much needed sort of um, like competitive aspect to destiny, you know, with the PVP, especially with the PVP side, obviously, because that's where it's base is PVP. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the sense that even if you, even if you go to the lighthouse already, not just in the sense that you want to help Sherpa people to the lighthouse, which is a big part of Destiny intrinsically in the sense that you want to help people, which I think is awesome. Yeah. That's been one of my favorite things about Destiny to begin with is that even if you finish something, for some reason, even if you get all the loot out of it that you can, you want to help people get that loot. I don't even know what it is. I don't know if it's just because yeah. you know you want the challenge again or because you want to help people get their loot or whatever it is. There's just that aspect of like, you know, not only can I go to the lighthouse once and get my loot, I can help other people go to the lighthouse and get loot. And there, and you want to. You want to help them get their loot, even if you don't get anything. You want to and, – and even if you don't get any loot out of it, there's still that satisfaction of uh, getting to the lighthouse again. It's like, oh, I didn't go to the lighthouse just once. I went like three times this weekend. I helped like, you know, a couple other groups get their, get their loot at the lighthouse. And it, it was it was much needed in the PvP scene because – Sure, PvP can sort of stand on its own legs in in the sense that, you know, it's fun and there's that replay value of just player versus player. But right. it's it's just so fun to be able to. It's just so fun seeing all those those nine yellow dots on your card <laughs> <laughs> fill all the way out, even if it's more than once and you don't get any loot out of it. You just want to see that flawless card again because it's just right. it's so satisfying. That's yeah. why I did it. I got to a point where. Um, I was lucky because out of like five trips to the lighthouse, I got everything that I needed. Yeah. You know, so I just I kept coming back for the thrill of it, and you know they helped get my other clan members to the lighthouse that had never been there before. You know, and so it's it's just the, it's it's the it's the it's the rush of being that competitive against another person. You know, you you know it's a it's a three on three gunfight. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, there are, you know, mechanics that people would try to exploit with the final round with, you know, the meta of the game at that time. <clears throat> but it was always that that seriousness that I always put in trials, even in elimination when I play. It's always that mm-hmm. that that recon work that you do 30 seconds before the match starts. And what oh, do yeah. you to adjust, you know, you know, yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, I never. If you guys don't that. know what we mean by recon work, you can uh, go into the roster and you can look at the players 
when you're warping in so you know exactly what guns what their lo loading out is so that you can uh adjust apparently. yeah it's like oh we got a blade dancer oh great oh we got a gunslinger oh, or <laughs> or i think what's what was your thing come out whenever we'd go in and be like oh great it's three fucking hunters with three <laughs> yeah. fucking thorns. Three it's my hunters. worst goddamn nightmare. Oh yeah, God. three hunters and three thorns. It's my <laughs> worst that, nightmare. That, that uh, was was it with you? Was it us playing that night? It was okay. So it was. It might have been. We were in the cauldron. I would never forget this. We were in the cauldron. Oh, yeah. This was the one week when trials was uh, random, and we went across three hunters. And I would tell you it was the most obnoxious game I'd ever played. All they did was blink and shotgun. They were blinking everywhere. It was yeah. like, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, you know, <clears throat> that science experiment, and they show the proton, the electrons, and they just bouncing around all over the place. <laughs> That's how they were. And I was like, this is obviously, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. this is not competitive at all. This is just stupid. <laughs> right yeah. here. I think that was the two of us, actually. It might have been. I don't know. I don't know. I th I'm, I'm almost positive, though, Dame. I think it was you, me, and Linux. I'm pretty sure uh, playing Trials on uh, it was Widow's Court. Yep. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I and I had that clutch round with the Matador, where I was almost dead. Oh yeah. Like almost the entire. It's one of the I have only, the video of that. Yeah, it's one of the I only videos I have on YouTube of me playing Destiny. It's one of the only videos I you, have. You have it on YouTube. You should uh, you should link it onto our. Uh... <laughs> I should on Facebook, right? man. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 one of the only videos I have, and it was, I think, like you know, I think it's insanity. Yeah, it was just nuts. Yeah. Like I just, I just, I did not think I was gonna live, but I somehow survived. And this guy almost came with yeah, a shotgun, and you, I managed to take him out of the matador. But and like, I no, it, every, around. every other word out of your mouth was like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah, and I, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, he's moving around the corner, he's coming around, he's moving by the body, yep. you know. And I was like, just listing off like one of those, you know. Yeah, announcer just the, guys. the intensity and the and it's just so good. Yeah, it is. Any PvP this is the first that's the first mode that made like my heart race. Every yeah, time mine I too. Was. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and it's like any game that can make me do that, any competitive game that can make me do that, you got something. You got yeah. something really good. Man, no kidding. You know, now I'm completely focused. I don't know if and, it can actually be competitive in the sense of like professional you know playing or whatever because of the supers and whatnot i don't know but yeah it's just it definitely has its has it in its own right has its like it's serious just just heart pumping yep. like heart racing just like it's just it's so intense and like it just i'm so glad they made elimination feel, permanent this year oh yeah same here good good call good call because then it allows us to practice but like we were saying earlier with the whole inspecting loadouts like I was saying at the beginning of this podcast, oh God, if I if 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 Sunbreaker stays the way it is and I inspect and I see three Sunbreakers, I'm gonna blow my own brains out and just <laughs> and, a and just be done with it. <laughs> well, and on that completely sad and horrible note, <laughs> uh, obviously we love the shit out of Taken King and Trials and everything that we've talked about. Because I'm looking at the call recorder and it's fucking at four hours. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to edit that because typically my rule is never, <laughs> ever do a podcast that's three hours long. <laughs> and we just Kings fall this fucking podcast yep. and made it twice as Easily. big. So uh, if you're listening to this show and this is somehow part three or four, uh, that's what fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so before we, we go, uh, gentle guardians, I, I, in the spirit of Killbots, uh, giving and helping out guardians, um, I have a, uh, another Red Bull quest code to, uh, give out to whomever listened to this King's Fall sized monstrosity of a podcast. Um, so you can go to rebelquest.com to redeem your focus light, which gives you 30 minutes of double XP as well as unlocks a exclusive quest uh that will net you a uh a ship and uh, i think an emblem and a sparrow that's basically a reskinned tumbler um that looks pretty darn good in year two if i do say so myself um so that uh code is three three seven the letter l as in larry uh another letter l as in larry n as in 
new. <laughs> and then, as in get wrecked news <laughs> yeah yeah and then uh, the letter letter r as in re- rectum and then <laughs> the letter <laughs> the letter x wow. as in uh, uh uh x games um <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do that with a straight face. So that's again, that's three three seven L L N R X. That's 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 yours, Guardian. So if you can get to that. Uh, final closing things here. Remember to give us a review on iTunes or wherever you download this podcast from. And don't forget, you can connect to us on social media with at, on, or through our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Agents of the Nine, a Destiny podcast. You can check out our Twitter at Agents of the Nine, or of course, email us any questions, comments, or concerns. You too can answer the questions of the week, which, holy shit, I forgot to ask the question for next week, um, which is is thinking off the top of my head uh what's the game or thing that you do when you feeling a little bit of burnout from destiny so that Mm. you can go back and play more destiny what is that that question again is what is the the game or thing that you do to recharge your batteries after getting a little Mm. bit of burnt out on say a week out a weekend of destiny or something like that you know, I haven't played Rocket League in a long time. Yeah, me yeah, neither. There's Rocket supposed League to be DLC either. coming this month, too. <clears throat> I think we just answered it for next week. It's Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Rocket League. Uh, also, for myself, it's Metal Gear Solid V because it's fucking incredible. Um, yeah, so you can email your answer to that question of the week there for next week to agentsofthe9 at icloud.com. You can, of course, find our podcast on iTunes Store, Stitcher, Podbean, all those good places. Uh, also, remember to buy my science fiction adventure book, The Citadel Arrival by Tim K. Trotter, which is available right now on Amazon Kindle Store and iTunes iBookstore for only $2.99. Get a free preview download when you visit those stores. It's a short story, only 160 to 190 pages, depending on your screen size. Again, that's $2.99 on Amazon Kindle and iTunes iBookstore. So buy a book, support this show. Um, Pre Taken King. I would have used the tagline, it 100% has more story content than Vanilla Destiny, which I think is still (laughs) true. Um, Additionally, if you want uh, more podcasts from people like myself or Damien, but on different subjects, I also host a weekly show called Rising Tide, a Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. Your one-stop shop for all things Marvel uh, movies, TV shows, comics, and more. Um, And uh, Damien's pretty regular on that, especially lately. So you can check him out there as well. Uh, so without further ado, sign off, gentlemen. I'm Tim K. Trotter. Signing off. Get wrecked, Guardians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm Killbot. Uh, you can check out my non-existent, this shit again? essentially, <laughs> YouTube channel at MLG space KV on YouTube because there's nothing on it. So enjoy that. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a uh, self made dame, and you can check out my stuff, my videos, and content and stuff on YouTube as well. That I am self made dame. So, yeah, got a little sum up there. Good stuff. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually have a really nice Mr. Clutch series. It's hilarious, too. Like, it's, it's a you have a what series? series? Mr. Clutch. <clears throat> oh, nice! It's so like a nice. yeah. It's like a it's like a. I got like six videos of that alone. I'm adding more to it, so it's like insanely clutch things that I've done in the crucible that has been like I, one of them is just ridiculous. Like if you see it, it's like there's no way in God's green earth he could have survived <laughs> all of yeah. that stuff. Nice. I still at that. Hey man, you and I have clutch to collaborate on that because I've had my fair share. Mm. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. Oh yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm down for the three of us doing uh, elimination at some point. That'd be awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. What, uh, what are you doing right now? Hey, let's do it right now. I'm down. Oh, sure. Right no, I, I would, would like just, to uh, say again. Damn sword mission, and trying to find spin metal, and I'm I got like seven more to find. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the fucking the hardcore spin metal. I have it's that, so yeah. hard. 
I have that for the for the uh, bolt caster, but Dude, it's fucking bullshit mission. I I forgot to switch my sword over to my warlock to to skip the PvP part, but now I have to do it on my Titan. God damn it, it's gonna be so lame. Oh, it's so fucking <laughs> shitty. Yeah. Alrighty, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang up on this and then I'm gonna go take a leak and uh we're we're all gonna play elimination then, yeah? Uh-huh. I'm up for elimination, you guys. Yeah, Dame, Fuck you want to yeah. do it? I'm up for it. Let's go. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'm going to be playing Titans, so we're you know we're going to win. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to win anyway shadow. because yeah. you two are all shadow fucking shadow. MLG and shit. If we have one of each oh, class, that'll be interesting. And I'm It'll just be good. hilarious. Yeah. No. yeah. And you can see like the Shadow Shadden full blown. Like, yeah, I'm... I'd love to see it from Dame. That'd be awesome. Oh. Just, yeah, man. All right, let's do it. Yeah, all right. already. I'm gonna. Oh my god, I can't even fucking believe it's four hours. Yeah, oh she's such a long one. My, oh my god, Jesus, you guys are so yeah. goddamn passionate. <laughs> Imagine if we had Buzz and Bjorn on. That'd be oh, insane. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. We're gonna have to figure this shit out because. Hey, good. I, l- I, I don't. Want good to luck editing, editing this. <laughs> good luck. I, I don't know what else to do except to split it up into segments because, yeah. like, we talked for so long on every segment. Yeah. Um, I, I know the first 20 minutes, me and Damien were talking before you were here. Sure. But it's like, holy fuck. I just wish you luck on editing this because, good God, it you're going to have some was, serious uh, work out of you. Yeah, it was no the, uh, the Titan OP talk that did it. Yeah. Well, yeah. that well, that and I just shouldn't have, talk I general. shouldn't have taken, yeah, I shouldn't have taken that mac and cheese jalapeno dump. <laughs> and I was like, here, you guys, talk about Crucible. And then yeah. you two Crucible heads got together and we're just like, oh, yeah, but what about this? Oh, yeah, but oh, my God. And then this thing, and I'm so mad. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I, I was actually back for probably like five minutes. <laughs> and I was just like, what can I say to interrupt this? Yeah. Something <laughs> about mac and cheese. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Serious, serious talks. Oh, my gosh. All right, All right. Uh, I'm going to hang up, and I'll be on in a couple minutes. Yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes as well. Cool. Take right. a jalapeno mac and cheese dump. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it. This is Dominic Armada, the voice of Guybrush Threepwood, and you're listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. Guardian down. Don't do that. Yo. Hey. We are missing a killbot. He was. Just, I don't know. He huh? was. He was just messaging on the agents of the nine PSN chat, like, literally a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. When the phone was ringing, I was in the middle of the nightfall, so I had I, I couldn't get to it. Mm, mm. Uh, did you hear the uh, Did you hear the thing that's going to be a, a hot topic to talk about on the podcast that broke today? With uh, there's going to be microtransactions in Destiny. Really? Yeah, it broke today. It's official. It's on Bungie right now. You can read it. What? I didn't think they were going to take that route. Wow. <clears throat> to be fair. <laughs> So far, they... is it for marks? No, 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 no. Uh, so far, uh, it's Tess Everest's thing. She's opening back up again, uh, and she will be uh, selling her Eververse wares, I guess, as they're calling mm-hmm. it. And uh, for now, they're going to launch with 18 emotes. Um, so it's you know, it's nothing like that breaks the game or anything. It's it's all completely right. optional. But uh, they're also, you know, surprise, Bungie will introduce yet another currency called silver. Uh, but the only way to obtain that is with real real money. Hmm. Yeah. So next Tuesday, next Tuesday it goes live. <clears throat> they're going to make a lot of money, but I don't think that was Bungie's call. I think that's an Activision call. Yeah, I think it's probably part of their contract. Yeah. I mean... But on the other hand, like, if it's just emotes, you know, and like if it's like emotes and like maybe uh, shaders and uh, emblems, like I'm mm-hmm. totally fine with that, to be honest. But if they start throwing fucking weapons and shit in there, then yeah, that's why I, I don't. I stopped playing like DC Universe and and um, War Wars. Not Wars. What is it? War. Um... 
Oh man, what's the name of that game? It's on the PS4. It was on PC for a while too, but <clears throat> I stopped playing that because um, you had to buy, you had to spend. You could get the weapons for free, but if you, it took a hell of a grind to get them. So in order, like, if you wanted it for the right now, you had to buy really, really good weapons and armor. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, mm, I don't know. And I kind of fell off. And see, with DC Universe, it's free to play. Yeah, but I, I played it. I played it for like three hours. Yeah. Back when I first got my PlayStation Four, and I didn't have any games. See, I had it on the three. And, oh, really? Um, yeah, I played it on the three, and um, I started to play a little bit on the four just for nostalgia. But I, I didn't download it till almost about a year into the PlayStation lifespan. So I played it again, but it was just like the fact that they put a cap on your goal. Mm-hmm. And you need that goal to like um, buy certain things in the game. Uh-huh. You know, it's uh, sucks pretty bad. You know, they only they only, they only let you get fifteen hundred. <laughs> and granted, the goal eventually, I guess you could say, would cap out because if you want the really hardcore stuff, you can't buy that. You have to just raid, ran raid, and raid a lot. Yeah. Um. You know, so. Oh. Uh, I think yeah, I I see where they're going. Yeah, with well, just, we'll we'll talk about it in detail on the yeah. like I'll read the the post. It's not a very long post from Deej, writing up the things that we're gonna be hitting on the show. I don't know where Killbot's at. I messaged him on my phone. Uh, by the way, whatever you have your mic thing on right now mm-hmm. is fucking perfect. Don't change anything. Don't move. Don't breathe. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I switched um, mic, so I'm actually using what Buzz used last week, and that's the oh, regular really? PlayStation. Yeah, so apparently, huh. that must work. Wow. Hell of a lot. That's interesting. I wouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. Huh. Well, do that then, because it's it's <laughs> it's perfect. Like all your background noise is gone. Like it's just your voice. It's it's fucking this perfect. This is this is why no one can never hear me play. Why I used to record because I I wore these throughout GNR. Oh yeah, yeah. No one, no one will ever hear me play because I knew it, it canceled out background noise. So you would never know I was playing a, unless I told you. You would never know I was playing. I've played PvP matches and everything. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So pretty cool. Um, did you see the videos I put? I put up one. Yeah, in... I watched your. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I fast forwarded the last two minutes of it. Your kill on Oryx. Oh I yeah, actually... that was yes. Yeah, yes. that was good. That was... was that your first Oryx yep. kill? Yep. Nice. Have you exper- experienced it all from the beginning? Yep. And that's why I had to checkpoint at at the end. Perfect. Because we're gonna we're gonna be talking raid today. Uh, uh, cool. Fuck is Killbot. We should stream one and just have like a whole. <clears throat> beginning to end podcast raid <laughs> yeah we helpful. should you'd have to host the streaming though I don't think I got the bandwidth for that shit cool. um, That's cool. yeah. I streamed a little bit today I did Shack school so I, uh, I was streaming some crucible stuff today nice yeah. um do you have your uh, do you have your playstation on question right yes uh can you see if killbots online there i just saw it yeah because um hold on they gave me another they gave me a crest to alpha loopy out of a purple nice. and how about that oh yeah how about that yeah bots on but bots in orbit so that means he's probably away from his playstation mm. it's possible um because i think he has like a small uh like single dorm room or something right so it's possible because the last two times he would like pick up the mic and like he'd be moving his laptop and shit around onto books and stuff <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell is going on yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's all good ah uh, you know what what i've noticed is that they changed the perks <clears throat> the secondary perks on exotics so one um, Cresta Alpha Loopy that I have mm-hmm. has increased the amount of pulse rifle ammunition that you carry and reduces income and void burn damage. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the whole thing now is everything's got two slots of random rolls. But here's another one. Yeah. Here's another one. 
I got with uh, actually a higher um, higher defense increases the amount of scout rifle ammunition I can carry and then reduces arc burn damage hmm. so this is cool because I like using pulse rifles for PVE so I can use that I mean PVP and I like using my hung jury for PVE so I can have two different crest alpha loopies hmm. that actually works nice yeah, I've been, I I heard uh, I heard on IGN's Fire Team podcast today um, that I guess uh, the uh, randomized two rolls is maybe not working as Bungie intended because people have been sending in screenshots of people having like two knee pad perks on and stuff oh, like wow. that. I mean, there is some OP stuff. Like, I have a, a thousand yard, and especially when we get the Crucible. Oh man, I want to talk about OP because there, there's mm. some things. Definitely yeah, broken with you the and, you and Killbot so, were able to light up the podcast with that shit. Oh my gosh, it, it, it's just ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. But <clears throat> yeah, there are some things that are OP. Like I got a thousand yards. I got a thousand yards still with explosive rounds and 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 unflinching and grenadier. You know, so that's like just imagine if I had armor piercing and not grenadier, that would be a one shot kill anywhere, anywhere. You know, because explosive rounds add extra damage as well as armor piercing adds stronger impact. You know, so and and they're probably somewhere in the world or someone that will probably get all three of those roles that will line up like that, and that would be just insane. Yeah, dude, I just I was I was writing and I just realized, um, like, uh, so like I named Buzz's lore segment. Um, and I was just thinking about what I could name the crucible segment. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, man, if only it was just like, like KD ratio. And I was like, wait a minute, kill bot and Damien. Oh my God. It's perfect. <laughs> it works. It works perfectly. <laughs> oh, oh man. Man. That's hot. I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like it. I like that a lot. Let's see. There's kill bot. There he is. On PlayStation or? In a few. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. What a word. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of saw this coming with the, well, I'm going to hold out and talk about it more with the micro yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hold hold all your good shit. Mm -hmm. Hold all your good shit in for the show. Keep it fresh. Uh, hell yeah. I'm off tomorrow too, so we're gonna try to do some early raids. I might stream the raid tomorrow. Mm, lucky. <clears throat> yeah, right before the reset. I want the pulse rifle. I really want Yeah, the people pulse. are saying I was hearing in the again that same podcast, the IGN podcast, that the pulse rifle is really good. It's ridiculous in PvP. It's so nasty. You get two shot by a thing. It's insane. Oh, that's why Quantico wasn't on today because it comes on tonight. As a matter of fact, it's on now. Uh. Show's pretty good. I actually watched it after Agents of Shield went off last week. It's actually a really good show. Yeah. Oh, Damien, don't let me forget this podcast because I totally forgot last podcast. I've got two um uh Red Bull quest codes uh -huh. that I was hanging on to for the show. Don't don't let me close out the show without reading the Red Bull Quest Co. Or <laughs> even like when we do the introductions, like do do like a thing and be like, and then at some point in the show we're gonna be giving away a Red Bull Quest code or something. Cause I totally fucking forgot last week. And I didn't even edit it in, you know, like a little aside. Like I totally right. forgot. So Oh good. <clears throat> Good. All right. 
I started working on my Titan and then uh, I got him to at least <clears throat> um, the unlock his, his subclass. Nice. Yeah, so, I, I, did, uh, I did my Hunter and I did my Titan up to the subclass, but I haven't touched them beyond that. Yeah, I haven't even touched my Warlock. I need to get a Warlock. I definitely need to get my Warlock. There we go. Yeah, man. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I've got uh, in the show agenda here, uh, so introductions followed by general thoughts on mm -hmm. the Taken War quest stuff, which is the post main storyline stuff. Right. Um, and then our hot topic will be the whole microtransaction thing. Um, <laughs> I literally have this labeled Black Spindle Quest. What the fuck is the strat, oh people? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get into some uh, sleeper stimulant or simulant speculation. Uh, and then we're just going to talk a whole shitload about the raid. And then we'll do KD ratio with Killbot and Damien. And then I'll do some lore stuff since Buzz isn't here. And then we'll hit up our question of the week oh. from last week. <laughs> what was our question of the week last week? Our question of the week last week was, what was your favorite change that Bungie has made to I... Destiny? Okay. I think mine would probably be the, uh, well, I'm going to hold on to it. I got to enough. I love the hung. I love the hung jury in PVE, but in PVE, not so much. It takes me too long to down an opponent. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> Dude, yeah. you know what I I like? So I started doing that stupid quest for the. Uh, uh, what's the one where you have to use the last word? Oh, the text machine, the one? Yeah. yeah. That's for the chaperone. And, like, I'm not good at all with, like, either sniper rifles or hand cannons in the Crucible. Like, I just, like, I don't know. Like, I just can't do it. But I, <laughs> but I was using the last word because I had to, and I was wrecking. And I was like, holy shit. Am I, did I just suddenly become good with the last word? Let's see now. You, it's probably how you play it, too. Do you play mid to close? The <clears throat> last? Um, or, or. sort of, I guess. I mean, and maybe I was using it like, like, do you, do you use the last word at all? No, I hate using the last word. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I hate guess, you. I guess I'd have to ask Killbutt. Like, <clears throat> like I've heard that the way you're supposed to use it is unscoped in and using it, but I was using it scoped in and I was just fucking destroying people. And I was like, really? All right. You see, yeah, now because they they uh the aim assist has been upped and the impact has been optimized for mid range, mid to close, as it as it should have been. So the complaint about that was the fact that you could be where you at and shoot me and I'm all the way in DC. 
because the range was that stupid. You know, mm-hmm. so <clears throat> what they did was to counterbalance that they um they they dumbed the range all the way down. I mean, they completely nerfed it. And uh they they upped the auto aim. You know, so the aim assist. Mm-hmm. So it should be um it should be for like um hip fire. That's why they did that. Mm. You know, so but yeah, I hate using last word. Um how well, you know what it's funny because hand cannon wise my uh my baby was Hawk Moon, man. Mm. But you everyone knows that uh, so Yeah, you still using I, it? Unfortunately no, because it just doesn't shoot the same like it used to anymore. But uh Oh <laughs> and uh we also need to make sure when we get to the crucible talk to talk about uh the uh the changes slash uh upcoming uh stuff. Yeah, Trials of Osiris and uh Iron Banner. Yeah, because I got a little bit of questions on that, on the trial stuff. I think people are still going to try to find a way to manipulate that matchmaking system. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. It's all good, though. Okay, so for King's Fall, I've got, did the raid let you down in any way? What part of the raid do you think could have been designed differently? What did you want? What did you really want to be in the raid but wasn't? What's your favorite mechanic in the raid? And uh, most surprising moment in the raid, as well as speculation on the hard mode raid, as well as the mysterious third raid mode plus that secret room that was oh. floating around. Well. I'm a fake the most surprising because um yeah sorry <laughs> I, I uh yeah cuz I didn't get a chance to play day 1 so nothing really like made me say oh shit so because when I fought Oryx they told me everything that was going to happen to yeah beat him you know what yeah, I needed true. to do to beat him so they explained everything that happened Yeah Hey Kelby Hello hello Hey there Yo what's it going going it's uh it's one of those one of those fucking mondays <laughs> <laughs> sweet so i just posted uh what the agenda is uh okay. for the show which i had time to write up while we were waiting on you right on the burger king <laughs> the burger king <laughs> well you know he turned Turned a lot of guardians to burger. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, the test servers thing. Yeah. Oh that yeah. Did you re- see that shit? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be our hot topic since it just <laughs> broke today. Yeah. Like five hours ago or whatever. Um. Oh, I'm just looking through. Yeah. Do you like that lineup? Yeah, it looks good to me. Sweet. Very raid heavy, which is good. Yeah, well, we didn't cover it the last two weeks, so I think it's yeah. I think it's fair game now at this point. Sure. You know? Cool. Um, and I was looking for a name, because uh, like, I have a name for Buzz's segment, but Buzz isn't here, so I'm not going to throw out the name. But I was, I was, tell, I was telling uh, Damien, and I was like, man, if only we had something with like kill-death ratio. And then I was like, wait a minute, kill bot? Damien <laughs> kill death ratio. ratio. <laughs> That's great, actually. Yeah, it's perfect. It's so good. I feel much more clever than how fucking tired I am. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I'm kind of tired too. I had to get up really early this morning. Yeah, ditto. Okay, right on. Sweet. <clears throat> Do you have? Uh, you have a. Am I am I hearing the fan of your computer or the fan in the back of your room there, Kilby? Uh, it's probably my PS4, I guess, because it gets super loud here. I can turn it off. Huh. Has it just been? Has it just been on? 
Uh, I mean, it's been on, I guess. Maybe it's just loud in general. I, I mean, if a PS4 is loud, I think something's wrong with it. Yeah. PS4 is pretty maybe not fucking quiet. Yeah, maybe you I should. Just, maybe just use it way too often. Yeah. Well, don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been seeing some days from miles. Yeah. I mean, shit. Like, just by Bungie's statistics, like, I think I played my PS4 more than, like, maybe even my 360, which mm. kind of blows me away. Damn. Like, in a year. <laughs> yeah. Damn you, Same. Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I we got nine more years to go. Oh, Jesus. I don't even know how many hours I put in this. <clears throat> Before taking King out of that five weeks. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't even want to look at my stat. <laughs> I'll be disgusted if I look. I'll be so disgusted. If I <laughs> oh man! <clears throat> Sweet. So we're we pretty much ready to do this. This bitch. Yeah. Sure. Fantastic. All right, Damien's all good to go on the mic, and okay. I'm pretty good because I just did a podcast on the weekend. All right. Um, so uh, you want to give me uh, some some talking in a loud voice, like full sentences, and then talking in a quiet. Sure, voice, this please. is me speaking loudly. How's this? Is this too loud? I think it looks it's, fine. I'm looking at my own levels, and I, I feel like it's good. It's it's a, just a touch. It does a touch too loud. Hit really? the hit okay. the hit the red bar on my. How's that? How's that now? Is that good? Uh, say this is loud. This is super loud. Ah, uh, so loud. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> extra loud. <laughs> Yeah, you're okay. All right. All right. Sweet. <clears throat> Won't be too loud anyway. Yeah. All righty, gentlemen. Oh, wait. Sorry. Hold on. That was... Okay. Maybe that. I what? Confused my input with my input. Okay. There we go. Oh, okay. Did you rig up a real mic this time? No. Oh, okay. Still have yet to do that. I got to figure out my inbox. There's no other way for me to do it, but... Figure out your inbox. My M, M box? Like, oh, uh... M, M audio box? Uh, yeah, for, uh, yeah, like Pro Tools and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I... You're one of those Pro Tool <laughs> users. Yeah, well, they made us they made us use Pro Tools in, in school, so. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, I mean, Pro Tools is good. It's oh, better yeah, than, it's, it's yeah, definitely really good, good, but it's fucking microtransaction fuckfest. Oh, sure. You know. Well, what isn't these days? Even yeah, Logic Pro X, you know? Logic, yeah, I I used Logic, but I used the uh, Logic, the free version, or not the free version, but not Logic. GarageBand. No, 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 not GarageBand. The it was Logic um, Express. Not, yeah, Express. That's so old, bro. Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fucking well, so old. I went old. straight from that to Pro Tools, and Pro Tools is the best for music, so that's what I ended up using for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I, nah. I think that that argument could be debatable at this point. Because yeah, I guess. He uses everything on Logic. He reduces on Logic, he mixes on Logic, and he's, he's master. He can do Pro Tools, but he likes Logic because it's so much easier to maneuver around. Yeah. I don't know how different <laughs> Express is from Pro, but I was not, honestly, if I'm being honest, I'm not a huge fan of Logic Express. I mean, just, I don't know well, if this uh, faces. Pro, I mean, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest, like, I'm no, no music master or anything like that with the DAWs, but, uh, you know, like I, I fucked around with all of the versions of GarageBand up to X, and I had Logic Pro Nine, which is the full version of Express. Mm -hmm. Um, and like Nine is so fucking convoluted, like it pissed me off so much. And then when they introduced X, and then they also made the GarageBand, like they, the interfaces were in parity with each other. And then Logic like has this fucking awesome feature where it's just like. It only gets more complex, like if you add more things to it. So like it starts off like really simple, like looking like GarageBand interface. But then as you add more things and get into destructive editing, then it just brings up the more complications as you do them. So yeah. like, you know, if you're just fucking around with it, you don't have to be overburdened by a ton of shit. But anyway, I'm obviously biased. Sure. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of a lot of producers. I know they use Logic because Logic is. <laughs> it actually is better for plugins to produce. Well, and, and, and the whole thing with Logic, though, is since they went to Logic X and Apple rewrote their entire audio engine for 64-bit, it's, like, just way more way more nimble. And I know, because, um, like, I have friends in the music industry, and, um, like, I know their complaints about, what are they on, Pro Tools HD 9? HD 10. Are they on <clears throat> HD 10? Yeah. Well, I remember, I remember the complaint 
on HD9 were that their audio engine just was like not not as up to par. See, here's the were. here's the bigger here's the bigger kicker for ten. There's some wave files that work that after after nine can't carry over to ten. Mm. That's that's mm. part. That's the part. It sucks. Yeah. So I remember experiencing that. Yeah, that that is. I didn't. And I didn't know that till I was with, working with one of my engineers. And he was working on ten. And he was like, "Yeah, there's some files in this uh, folder that I can't drag over because ten's not going to read it." I'm like, oh, "Are you fucking kidding me?" So you, we got wave files and folders that are no good if mm. unless. It's not below. Yeah, and I mean some of the stuff that that like I've done done musically and stuff like the one like Apple has slowly been getting to all of them, but like there were really fucking amazing plugins for this thing called like the ES2, uh, which was widely used in the previous Logic and previous GarageBand iteration because they're built on the same engine, and they at the beginning of Logic Pro X they were incompatible. And then they've slowly been bringing support to those previous things. Like I have, a, I have a couple of files right now for, <laughs> don't laugh, like a little, little, little baby retro snake game, like that's <laughs> going on the app store that I was yeah. working on with a buddy of mine. And I was doing like all these retro synths and stuff. And I have some tracks that I pulled out of like just shit that I was fucking around with and ended up turning into a thing that could be useful. And it's like, I cannot play it in Logic Pro X, and then I'm fucking using GarageBand 6 from 2011 just because that synthesizer is still intact in that version. Yeah. But anyway, welcome to the <laughs> musician's grumble, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> she the just got real. <laughs> Actually, if you don't mind, give me a second. I'm going to the best real quick, and then I'll be, I'll be good to go. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I guess I never thought about it. You probably... <laughs> You probably uh, interact with all kinds of different sound equipment, Damien. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've uh, like, like the Logic is much for, for producers. I, you know, I can see why they use Logic more than Logic, Fruity Loops. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, there's a whole bunch because pr uh, plugins work so well with yeah. with those with those um, that software. So. You know, you can use uh, like the synth plugin. You can use Nexus plugin, which is pretty damn dope. That's like my go-to plugin for for music because the sounds on that are crazy. Um, it does good with with uh, MIDI <clears throat> MIDI stuff too. So like, if you have something like the Virus, which is a crazy, they make. I believe they make. Uh, I think the, the most might be okay. like a 23 key MIDI keyboard, but the sounds on there are so crazy and it's much more easy to maneuver Nice. in, in, in Logic than it would be to anything else. Yeah. Probably pro key. Talk about MIDI keyboards? Yeah. Yeah, they've, they, uh, the school I went to, the music school I went to, they wanted us to get MIDI keyboards. They, they, that was sort of a requirement, but mm -hmm. thankfully I had a Moog, I have a uh, Moog or Moog synthesizer. It's an analog synth. And it, mm, it and sexy. it functions, yeah, and it fu yeah, it's so sexy, and it functions as a MIDI keyboard, which is great. So didn't have to buy one. Real yeah, nice. when I was working on the soundtrack for uh, my audiobook that's not out yet, uh, with a buddy of mine who's an actual musician instead of whatever the fuck I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, if you're uh, a musician, you're a musician. Uh, we uh, he had a he had a cor he had a micro -corg. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah. it was the very last like microcord that had like would like work f only 50% of the time on like uh the MIDI plugin <laughs> which drove mm. me and him crazy cuz we'd be like I don't know man like I got the switch set like it should fucking should be picking up the MIDI. I don't know man like it just fucking turned <laughs> against the wall. God damn it. So, I eventually broke down and I bought oh, what is fucking sitting next to me. I bought a I bought a Line 6 mobile keys. Oh, Line 6, right on. Which, uh, it's it's actually uh, surprisingly decent. It's, it's funny, because like, my musician friend was like, why do your keys feel better on your fucking cheap-ass keyboard than my <laughs> cork? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I don't know things. 
<laughs> yeah, with with keys, I got to use ivory like ivory keys. I can't I can't use the plastic shit. That that shit drives me crazy. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, they don't. You can't me. find actual. I'm, they don't I'm make imagining you with now with like a here. scarf, and you're like throwing it behind your. Your shoulder now, Damien. <laughs> can, I can only use ivory keys. It's, it's some sort of ivory. It's not like a real ivory because that's been illegal for years. I mean, you know, right? Yeah, but it's some sort of composite that's like sitting. it's like weighted keys. Yeah, all those. Weighted oh, you mean keys. if you mean weighted, like fully weighted? Yeah, I know what you mean. Even though, like a lot of it's, synthesizers, it's like the are same not kind of stuff weighted. that, uh, like a good set of of dominoes is made out of. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was talking about. Well, if he's talking about fully weighted, I get the fully weighted versus non weighted. Even though my Moog is non weighted because that's how most synths are. But I, as a piano player, uh, prim, you know, fundamentally, I mean, I like my, I love my synth, but I'm mainly a piano player. I, I understand the fully weighted versus non weighted argument because mm-hmm. I, it feels so different. It's such a different feel. Yeah. Did, does, did you, you know. did you ever listen to our podcast yet, Kilbot? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you don't even you don't even know about our our intro. Uh no. Okay. I kind of feel like I need to play it for you just so you so badass. Yeah. The good good props to Damien for helping me make the right call on that. Yeah. Uh should I play the clean one or the mixed one? Damien. Oh, I said it before. The mixed one? Okay. All right, you ready for this? This is going to come through my speakers into the mic. So okay. tell me to turn it down if I need to, okay? Okay. The hive has been on Earth in centuries. That wizard came from the moon. Send them home crying. That's awesome. I love the Sepix Prime death noise at the end. That's great. Right? It's one of the better <laughs> sounds, I think, in fun, the game. Fun fact, right as he explodes, there's the uh, sound effect for the uh, exotic shard uh, noise, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was actually, I, was, I, I love so much the music in Destiny, especially some of the newer music. I was actually figuring out uh, one of the, one of the, like little songs actually i think it's it is piano in the actual song but i was figuring it out on mm. piano too oh, I was nice out. yeah i kind of want to do my own little renditions of some of the pieces from if, this, if you from ever this do board. if you ever do that shit and you have the midi for it please send it my way sure yeah i mean i'll have to i'll have to get on that i'm trying to i gotta get on writing my own songs again because i've been like i've been lagging on that since i've been teaching mm-hmm. lately so but I definitely want to get to get to get to some personal stuff of my own. Yeah, like it, it was funny. Like I originally wanted to use <laughs> like a Destiny song. Um, I was trying to find like a MIDI of just like any sort of Destiny song because like I'm really good at remixing. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I just fucking couldn't find anything except for that fucking Paul McCartney shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up I, um, like what you uh, listen to. Like that's not actually from Destiny. Like it's a a licensed like i licensed that fucking shit yeah so. I remember. anyway let's do this fucking podcast yo yeah, oh. great <clears throat> okay <clears throat> here we go cut